Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting for Monday, June 11th, 2018. I'm calling the meeting to order at 6.30 p.m. Uh, we'll start as we usually do with opening remarks, announcements, and agenda review. Are there any announcements or remarks or things on the agenda that need to be corrected, changed, or mentioned at this point in time? Um, I wondered if we should just um, talk for a moment about um, the rotation of vice chair assignments, uh, just so that we know uh, from Ms. Kruger and myself when we're coming back, if we're staying with the same August, September, which I think would have been our months. I think so as well. I, what I was thinking, given that Mr. Wald has been away in June, um, but I believe he's back in July, so we would just swap him in to take his normal turn that would have been in June, and he can be July, and then we'll go back to the order we had, but I'm open to suggestion on that. Okay. And then who would be August, because I never know the regular order. Let's see. That would be you. Mm -hmm. I would be August. You would be August. Okay, and that does remind me, um, Mr. Slaughter, that you were going to give us a reminder email where we were going to tell you our vacation schedules. Yes, and that was going to be along with the updated calendar yeah. of events, and so those but didn't get done. Right. But summer calendar just kind of fell into, finished falling into place yesterday. So it's, mine has been get you something that has been true for me as well. Um, we'll inform Mr. Wald of his impending service. <laughs> All right. Um, so, so July will be Mr. Wald, August Ms. Kruger, and then Mr. Steinberg. Right? right. September. Right. So I think that's the order we'll go in. Um, as we've once again packed the house, I see there's no one here for public comment. So we'll uh, move on from public comment to our first agenda item, which is the Open Space and Recreation Plan Review. And Mr. Uh, Zomek is here to take us through that a little bit. So we got a, there were a couple items on our desk tonight. Uh, I think a cover memo by Mr. Malloy. Um, it, Friday afternoon. it was, we got that via email. Um, and then a copy of a letter, which assuming our action this evening, I will sign. So I think those were the two things on our desk this evening, so. Mr. Zomek, if you'd like to take us through this. Sure, thank you very much. Dave Zomek, Assistant Town Manager and Director of Conservation and Development. Um, for those watching at home, I, I will, throughout my brief remarks, refer to a memo that you got on <coughs> June 8th from Senior Planner Nate Malloy. And I wanna start off by saying I'm here tonight, um, but really need to give uh, Nate Malloy, Beth Wilson, our Wetlands Administrator, and former uh, uh, planning director, Jonathan Tucker, credit for the update that you uh, saw and that is available on the website. Um, they have worked for over a year, as the memo um, outlines, uh, updating this document, and it is a very significant document. And, and again, for those watching at home, the Open Space and Recreation Plan is a guiding document for the town. It goes, uh, hand in hand with our master plan and it really speaks to what are the town's goals relative to uh, protecting and managing the uh, protecting uh, land in Amherst natural resources in Amherst and managing the land that we already have and also what are our goals and objectives relative to recreation land um, and as I've been before you uh, in the past couple of meetings talking about some of our projects like the North Common uh, like uh, updates and, and uh, plans for community field and, and the high school and whatnot, these plans uh, bring, this plan brings all of those ideas together in one place. Um, it is also a plan that is required of every community in the state in order to be eligible for two grant programs that Amherst has been very fortunate to take advantage of, and that are the park grants and the land grants. Park. Um, is for playgrounds and, and um, uh, active play areas, play spaces, and land grants are for open space. I think Mr. Malloy's um, email outlines very clearly, but I just wanted to highlight a couple of things. Uh, the memo outlines very clearly uh, by section what, um, what it, what's different about this 2000, it's 2017, it's called the 2017 update. We're now into 18. We need to get this into the state. 
but it's really an update to the 2009 plan. The state either gives communities a five-year window, a five-year blessing, if you will, or a seven-year blessing, uh, depending on how long you've had an open space and recreation plan, et cetera, et cetera. We've had one. We're probably one of the communities in the state that has had one the longest. Um, ours goes back probably 30 years. Um, so the good news is uh, we try to get seven years out of this plan, and essentially once you submit it, it's been um, approved by the state. You either get five years of essentially credit for that or seven years. Um, so our hope is to get seven if we can, but we'll take the five. So really quickly in terms of highlighting, I'm not going to go through each section as Mr. Malloy did, but the two areas that I think where we spent a lot of time uh, in this plan are really um, in section one, uh, and this is a theme throughout, increasing recreational opportunities and diversifying recreational opportunities and improving stewardship and maintenance of existing trails and conservation lands. This plan, as I've said, we are really moving into a, um, a, a point with our open space where we feel as though our priorities for acquisition have been met for the most part. We may pick up properties here and there, but the focus over the next five, 10, 15 years should really be on management and enhancement. Puffer's Pond, Wentworth Farm, Mount Pollux, how do we care for those areas and how do we enhance those areas for more use and um, uh, also to take care of those areas uh, when overuse becomes a problem. Um, under section three, some of the highlights and growth and development patterns, uh, they called out that, of course, we are gonna have more housing. We're already experiencing uh, growth in our village centers in terms of more housing. North Amherst Village Center is a great example with the Beacon Project that we will be, um, there'll be an event for later this week. That will bring hundreds of new residents to North Amherst and likewise, more demands uh, on our, both our recreation areas like Mill River and uh, the so-called cow field and also our trails and Puffer's Pond. So how do we plan for that growth and um, make sure that we're ready for it and those areas are not overtaxed? And then the diversity of recreational opportunities. What do young families and what do young athletes, uh, what are new families coming to Amherst? What are they used to in the communities they're coming from? And how do we uh, provide some of those, um, those opportunities? And equally as important, how do we provide for those people in our community already who may not have access to uh, uh, recreational uh, facilities close to where they live? A great example, I think, is Groff Park, where we're, we are enhancing Groff Park. At the same time, we're enhancing East Hadley Road with a multi-purpose path to help those residents in low and moderate income uh, uh, um, uh, apartment complexes on East Hadley Road to get to Groff better. Um, so those are kind of, those are the real highlights that come out uh, in the various sections. Um, I think making our amenities more uh, accessible, uh, accessible trails, adding accessible trails in our conservation land. We have four or five at this point, but perhaps adding new ones and making all of our recreational uh, fields and facilities accessible. Uh, for those of you who might have been at the Weston and Sampson presentation on Community Field, um, we learned a lot from them about what we could do at Community Field, the high school and the middle school to make our facilities more accessible. Um, so I think I'll stop there and, and take questions. Um, <clears throat> what is being asked of the community right now is really that the select board um, supports our submittal of the update of the plan, um, that you've had input, and I'm happy to take any of that feedback and input tonight. The Conservation Commission has already voted that they have read the, the, the plan and support it. Uh, the planning board has, has also done that. I will be with the LSSC Commission with, I think, Beth Wilson on June 28th with the LSSC Commission to talk to them about it. And so they'll have an opportunity to give more feedback. So I think I'll stop there. Uh, again, this is an update to a longstanding plan. We want to make it better each time we update it. Questions or comments for Mr. Zemek? Mr. Stanford. I have two things, and I've, um, they're on separate topics, and I'll keep them separate. And the first one is very focused, focused on content plan, and the second is 
focused on process. Um, the content question is, uh, and you made a little bit of a reference to this when you described the goals, that there's um, recognition of the need for maintaining what we have and enhancing the quality and, uh, and therefore the, the use of what we have. And there's also some identification of some additional pieces that could be added in various places to enhance what we have. And uh, how those get balanced uh, against each other uh, over the time, uh, is it going to ultimately be a matter of what we have opportunities or funding to do, or is, it, is, is there further, is there a real plan on what the significant order is? That's a good <coughs> question. <clears throat> um, a couple of things that are going on simultaneously, and I've mentioned this before, um, both conservation and planning staff are embarked on a process to write land management plans, LMPs, for every one of our conservation areas in town. There's probably 45 of these in various stages of drafts. Most, most of them are quite a ways along. Those land management plans speak to um, the amount of use that each area gets, uh, compare Podic Conservation Area in North Amherst to Puffers Pond in North Amherst to the Ritchie Conservation Area on Bay Road or Mount Pollux. All of them experience different levels of usership, uh, the different kinds of activities that happen there from running to mountain biking to dog walking to yoga to bird watching to mushroom picking. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. So those land management plans are being developed. Out of those will come individual goals and objectives for the conservation areas. And we'll really use those, my, my goal, because uh, again, my predecessor, Pete Westover, who I have always called the architect of, of Amherst Conservation System, um, over his 30-year career with the town, did most of that um, um, without plans. I mean, he was that experienced and that senior. but. One of my goals is, is when I leave town service, I would like to leave all of those plans in very good order so that future generations of managers can manage those lands. Uh, we will get many of those things done, and to your point of funding resources, yes. Uh, this past year was the first year that I asked for CPA funds to uh, do management and enhancement on conservation land. It is a it is a, an acceptable use of CPA funds. Those dollars, my understanding is, can only be used on those properties that were purchased with CPA dollars. So that's one of the limitations of using CPA funds. I expect to come before the council every year to be asking for uh, essentially uh, CPA dollars to be used on capital improvements, parking areas, picnic areas, trail improvements, bridges, because we have no source of those funds. I think in the future, uh, I think we will also be coming to whatever form of joint capital planning uh, uh, committee we have to also ask for capital uh, improvements. Puffers Pond is a great example. How do we fund the dredging? How do we fund beach improvements? Things of that sort. So that was a long answer, but I think it's, it's a combination of those. But I think we do need to enhance some of these areas to make them um, more user friendly. Um, I often ask myself, why do we not have picnic tables out at our conservation areas? Many places you go and you, you could do a carry in, carry out uh, system for trash, but there's no reason why some of these areas shouldn't have picnic tables where people can picnic on a beautiful view and, and look out over the Hoyoke Range or, or wherever they are in Amherst. So, long answer. Do you have a uh, follow up? I, I have no follow-up on this, and I have another topic. I didn't know if there's other, other people have similar things on this section before I go on to the other thing I was going to ask about. The other thing I was going to ask about, and I think that it's, some of it is just I think we need to build a record for ourselves. The charter is very clear that we're not supposed to be taking significant actions that... Um, could wait for the commission, but we have a charge to 
move forward um, and uh, continue to administer the town as as appropriate. And uh, so uh, this is a plan that's been in process and uh, it's my understanding, but I wanted to get a clear statement of the due date that is expected from the Commonwealth for the completion of this plan so that uh, we have in our minutes something that um, is, uh, coincides with what our responsibility is under the new charter. And uh, so I think that that was a major point. And then as in addition, um, comments about, and you've already made one very important one, but how the um, council once elected will be able to um, either um, continue to review and comment on the uh, on this it, if at all and um, what its other duties are um, going forward so those are the that's the other topic and I don't know if Mr. Bachman has anything to add on that either the due date is the question um, if I could start maybe with the last part of that um, which is you know I presume that the council will, once seated, will review all plans that are on record from the master plan, economic development plan, housing production plan, and likewise the open space and recreation plan. And they certainly will be able to um, have presentations from me at any point or, or my staff on, on uh, updates or, or overview of that plan and what some of the goals and objectives are. In terms of due date, um, our goal is to have all of this packaged up by June 30th. And um, the rationale and the, the uh, impetus for that is that um, we are closing on the Epstein property in July or August. And if we don't have an approved open space or recreation plan, we are not eligible for the reimbursement. So there's really a carrot and stick here. We cannot be reimbursed for any open space projects until we have an updated plan. So the timing is pretty important to get it done by June 30th. Okay, that's very helpful. So just to follow up that, so the record will reflect because that is the, um, whatever the phrase is about delay, you know, not to delay in a way that would be helpful too. Your mic. Oh, thank you. Um, just to make sure it's clear, I think your point about putting that in the minutes, that, that was our rationale. But to delay would be harmful. Um, so I just had a, a, a couple of little things, and I will confess not having read the plan because I wasn't able to. So I'm, um, I suppose I could, I could catch up with that meeting of the 28th or submit comments. But um, to me, the shift from, you described Pete Westover in the acquisition years to moving to a management and maintenance. I'm not sure it was because he was, so skilled, but it was a different time, and the focus was acquisition, and then you get to a point where sometimes there's exceptional things that come along, like the Epstein property, whatever, but it, that maturing of our open space culture and looking at management and maintenance makes sense, and it made me think, just uh, some of the trails that I use a lot because they're in proximity to where I live, have these wet and low areas, and what happens is either they get extra worn because people are walking through, you know, the really wet soils, or they become not too pleasant to use. And in the lens that you use for the management plans, to think about that, and it um, so it made me think um, it's in Hadley, but the Conti reserve where they've done a, such a beautiful job in a wet area. I mean, that's expensive because it's all structured, kind of a lot of boardwalk area, um, and it's fully accessible, handicapped accessible, and it deals with being sensitive to a wet area. But um, I'm just thinking of the couple of ones I use frequently have these, like, you'll be going along fine, and then you'll get to this muddy trench kind of thing. And I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, Mr. Zlomak. Um, so just to make sure, with all these other asset, you know, features that we're talking about for maintenance and um, protecting the resource, that um, we do have some areas that get really wet, and, and I think it, it damages them. And so I don't, you know, if that's part of your thinking. Please. 
No, absolutely. That's a great example. It's a it's a small and simple example of how we can do better out there. Um, we've spent the last 30 to 40 years acquiring land, and I think we'll spend the next 20 to 30 managing them better. And of course, it's 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 in perpetuity that we will do that. But we need to improve some of those areas so that they don't kind of get loved to death and erosion and compaction and all of those things are, are part of that. Um, many people bring up the Conti uh, Refuge Trail in Hadley to me, um, and their numbers, their visitorship is quite impressive. Um, I don't know exactly how they paid for it, but I was told at one point that that trail was probably close to half a million dollars uh, to build, and it is just stunning. Um, we certainly would you know, we would probably not be able to afford something like that, but in small places like the Kevin Flood Trail or this new trail we're building down at um, 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 Orchard Valley, uh, Hitchcock Center has an accessible trail. <coughs> we need to even do better to both maintain them, but also let people know that they're out there because people don't know they are. And how do we publicize those trails in a more effective way so people who want to go out uh, with their child in a stroller or may have a mobility challenge can can find four or five areas throughout Amherst that they can they can uh, uh, recreate and enjoy a quick follow-up so I would I realize we might not replicate that but I think there may be a couple of hundred feet in a couple places where we could borrow those ideas just to navigate the really mucky parts Yes, we're looking at a couple of creative ideas right now, even along the rail trail, off of the rail trail, mm -hmm. uh, looking at getting people out in a, in a wetland environment mm -hmm. uh, with some sort of a boardwalk and viewing platform or blind where they mm -hmm. can kind of get there early and then experience, you know, as close to nature as possible with birds and animals and muskrats and beavers and and uh, yeah, so I think we're always looking for those opportunities. But snapping turtles. Snapping turtles. <laughs> Go to your yard. Yeah, my but but I will make a promise that I think I will before be before the the council and CPA and capital planning in the next couple of years, saying, you know, modest improvements can go a long way in some mm -hmm. of these areas. So I looked at some sections in more depth than others, and others I just skipped, to be mm -hmm. perfectly blunt. So one thing that occurs to me that is kind of a big picture thing that I wonder if might be addressed, and perhaps I missed it in here, that's entirely possible, is as we're working on the management plans for each of those areas, I think one of the things that confuses our community is where some of the lines are drawn as to what's public and what's private and what's actually town-owned land. And mm -hmm. so people wonder, you know, out at Kiwanis Park when the kids are playing in some sort of semi-organized t-ball fashion or another sport, you know, how much of the water are people, is it is it kind of a just, well, we know people are going in the water, but it's not really a good idea, or, and, and I'm not asking you to answer that at this point, but as you're working on each of those areas, I mean, I know we're not going to draw little boundary markers around everything, but to kind of think about the impression that people have when they're using the area, like maybe, and maybe they'll stray, you know, you don't want them to stray into people's yards, onto private property, et cetera, they're, they're you know, garden sites, for example, which I know is not the focus of this, but on North Pleasant Street that people wonder, who actually owns things and so while we're not going to go out and plant signs everywhere when you are looking at actively more actively managing an area I think that that would be something to be worth consider is that people appreciate that hey this is actually a public resource or but over there it's not that's actually mm -hmm. part of that neighborhood's private thing mm -hmm. so no I have two quick examples uh, in exactly that vein um, I'm working with the Kestrel Trust uh, with some wonderful Conway School of Design students who are looking at our trailheads along Bay Road uh, facing and accessing the Mount Holyoke Range. And um, these two, two students are doing a wonderful uh, studio on how do we enhance those trailheads to provide more of a um, uh, an approach and, and a, you've arrived. You've arrived, at, you've, you've arrived at, at an Amherst conservation land trail, trailhead. What can you do here? Where can you go? What's private property? What's public property? Uh, is there a map there or is there an app 
that um, there is a wonderful um, app, um, and I'm going to blank on the name of it, but All Trails. All Trails, thank you. I think I might have brought that to your attention or vice versa, but uh, All Trails. So doing that, just that kind of thing. Uh, we just had a great meeting on Puffer's Pond the other day, and, and one of the enhancements that somebody mentioned was um, uh, we are going to do bathymetry studies of Puffer's Pond this summer, looking at the depth of the water and the depth of the sediment. And somebody said, wouldn't that be great to actually put online and on the kiosk there to give people a better un understanding of if you're with young children, the area to wade is here, not there. How far is it from beach to beach? Um, how deep is it under the cliffs? Just to give people a better understanding of the resource because you often come there and say, oh, um, I don't know where the current is. I don't, you know, um, can we swim in other places on the Mill River or the Fort River? I think you were uh, alluding to the area they called um, Jump Bridge uh, near Kiwanis Park. So I think all of those fall right in this category of doing a better job communicating about our resources. Um, and not that we're being secretive, but people are getting information in different ways now, most of it online and on their, on their uh, 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 mobile app, mobile device. So good. Other input or questions? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shift a little bit here in some ways and, and touch on a topic that's, uh, I think, in some ways related, but, but not, is that, you know, one of the things I was noting was the, uh, the sort of inventory of properties of varying kinds that's in there was pretty exhaustive and I was thinking about our surplus property um, inventory that will need to be taken up sooner rather than later since we've developed a policy around surplus property. Um, it's unlikely that any of these, but maybe a few, would fall into that category. I was just wondering how this and potentially there was a, um, I was also reviewing the, the manager's goals and one of the things on there is a building inventory that we had uh, Mr. Pahanowitz do a couple of years ago. Um, and the update to that and how those merge together to form a full sort of inventory of all properties of the town, both with buildings, without buildings, in restricted uh, circumstances like conservation and not, and sort of, you know, how do you envision getting to uh, that inventory of surplus property? Um, so that's not expressly related to the open space recreation plan, but parallel, I would say, or mm -hmm. complementary. Well, again, um, I have to give a lot of credit where credit is due, and Nate Malloy, Jonathan Tucker, Beth Wilson, Stephanie Ciccarello, um, all have put in uh, just loads and loads of time on that document, going back 10 years, that uh, more than 10 years that I've been here. So I think we're very fortunate to have that inventory in pretty good shape of our recreation lands and our conservation lands and our APR lands, which are private, but have a restriction on them. So those three categories are pretty clear. We can still look at that list and you always find that database and find some some glitches, but by and large, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I think that forms the basis of, of having a, a much easier review of those lands to say, might there be any that we are not using? I, I think you're, you're more likely to find that in a category of um, some of the, the parks and fields uh, in large part because they may or may not be protected by Article 97. Um, and so we have, are they being used, are they being actively used by the town, and are they protected by Article 97? Uh, conservation land, as we know, and as we, I hope, support as a community, is very difficult to remove from uh, a conservation status. Um, but I do think looking at some of those parks, particularly as we look at community field, and uh, the high school fields and the, and the middle school fields over the next five to 10 years, um, might more of our recreation um, uh, games and, 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 and uh, energy be focused there. There might be uh, some fields that don't need to be as actively managed. There perhaps might be some surplus property there. I can't say right now, none of them jump out. Um, but I will say that we already have, so we have those three categories, APR, which is private land, conservation, recreation, parks uh, like Kendrick Park, for instance, um, which should be on the list. And then we have a whole nother category, which are just town-owned properties with or without buildings. So Ruxton Gravel Pit would be on there. We have a couple of properties at the end of subdivisions that we probably picked up as gifts or something that couldn't be used. So we already have that um, 
database, shall we say. We already know what those are. So when I was coming before you to talk about surplus property, I was pretty confident that we have eight to a dozen properties. Um, some of them might have wetlands. Some of them may have challenging access, but we know what they are. So, you know, I feel like we had a good a good jump start on that already. And as you know, I'm pretty pretty excited to get going in that process. Um, even as we um, change our, our form of government, I, I think that'll be an exciting process to go through. So we feel pretty good about that. We can get going on surplus property tomorrow. Great. So. No, I was just curious as to, you know, when you do an inventory of this sort, you know, how close we are to understanding for all the properties we own, sort of you subtract this from, you know, it's like all of our uh, you know, own properties and you subtract out conservation and et cetera, et cetera, you know, sort of what's left starts to become open for the question of, of whether it's surplus or not. Um, so I think that that's what I wanted to hear was just that, you know, you're, you're feeling in a good place from an inventory standpoint that you can get to a sort of a list to start working from to start yeah. determining whether it is or is not surplus or is there a use for it that we haven't considered. But because that's sometimes I think what happens is we have a piece that we've acquired and it sort of sits there quietly and we kind of forget about it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's it's not. Uh, you know, necessarily serving a purpose for the community in the way it could. And so that's helpful to kind of review that. So one of the advantages I have is, you know, sitting with and next to me and, and the town manager are, you know, Chris Brestrup and Nate Malloy and, and Guilford Mooring and Amy Rusecki and all these people who know our properties very well, what they're used for, what they're not used for. Um, um, so I, I feel like we're in we're in real good shape with regard to that. The, the other piece that I think is important for the public to know and the board to know is that we certainly have those ID'd. What we haven't done is some of the title work, and that's really important, as we found out with East Street School a little bit. Um, how did it come to the town? Did it come as a gift? Did it come as an unrestricted gift? Did it come as a restricted gift? Do it, do, are there any restrictions on it at all? Um, so that's where we need to do a little work, because some of these properties we've just been caretakers of for you know, 50 years, 100 years, and we need to do a little title research, so. Yeah, sometimes the rules have changed since we acquired them, probably. That is true. Mm -hmm. Are there questions and comments for, for Mr. Zomack on the open space changes and plan? If not, we do have a motion on our motion sheet uh, relative to this that would sort of take him one step closer to actually submitting this. Ms. Krug. Okay. Um, I move to support the 2017 Town of Amherst update of the Open Space and Recreation Plan as presented. Second. And there's a second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And that's unanimous with one absent. Thank you very, Thank much. You very much. Can I just add one little tidbit that I, I forgot, and that is, um, I am always on the lookout for projects that have multiple purposes. So in my, on my radar screen are a number of properties that may, for instance, fit well to do a combination conservation, affordable housing acquisition, uh, where say the frontage on a piece of property is significant, but not significant to the natural resource values of the back land. So um, I have a short list, a short inventory, probably five to seven properties that we're looking at. And again, I've been in touch with one such landowner for probably 10 years or more. And as circumstances changes in people's lives, as people get older, sometimes their decisions or their, their, uh, the information they're, they're giving us changes. So um, I am constantly in, in touch with those folks. Um, I would love to do a project where we combine affordable housing and conservation. Um, we've done some projects like that through the years, but there's opportunity for more. And that way we can bring state funding together on both housing and, and open space. So be excited to do a project such as that. Screw Now that you've brought that up, um, I guess I can't quite resist. So recently there was a acquisition, I w I'm not gonna mention what it was, where there was a potential opportunity for one or more house lots and I think um, some of the housing people, housing committee talked about this and I think the answer was that the staff had decided that it wouldn't be a good opportunity for affordable housing that may or may not be true. But I just want to encourage 
the staff and yourself in the future, that people um, who are working on affordable housing for the town through the different committees be included in that decision making. That staff, I don't think, should be shutting down um, that conversation and saying, well, we don't think that's a good place for a moderate income home or around. I mean, I just, I've, I've seen that happen a number of times over many years where where there might have been a more robust conversation about what could or couldn't be done with housing on something that more immediately presented itself as an op a conservation opportunity. So just want to keep mm -hmm. that dialogue open where the housing folks can be brought in to that before um, those decisions are finalized. Sure. Happy to do that. I'm not sure exactly which one that is, but talking happy about to... the Epstein property, because you said, I remember a meeting within the last six months where you said, well, Mr. Hornick, I think asked if there were some opportunities, if it had been looked at in that light, and you said, yes, and staff had decided that wasn't a good place for affordable housing. So I just right. sort of like a sensitivity of mind that those conversations be opened up a little bit more. Staff has a lot of skill, but everyone comes to this with their own set of, of, of their own lens. Yeah, and in that case, I may have, it may have not have been the exact accurate answer in that, as you know, there are many factors that play in. One of them are the wishes of the seller. And so if a seller is not interested in such a proposition, then... Um, but, but it moves off the table. But do you remember um, that exchange? Or? I do. Okay. I do, issue. yeah. But in so that just, case, I'm I sensitive think, to that yeah, issue. I think in that case, oh. there might it have was been not other. something that was of interest to the seller. So if, if I'm thinking of that specific property. Yeah. There may be more to it, but yeah. that, I remember hearing that answer and thinking. Eh. Yeah. The other challenge always is how does a committee, I think you're talking sometimes about executive session, because you can't share all of your negotiating information with a committee unless you're in an executive session. It, so. And that is sometimes yeah. true. Yeah. So, thanks thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for hearing me thank out on sure. one of my little things. Good Great. Night. Thank you. So next on our agenda, unless you look like you had a comment there. I'm puzzled, actually. <laughs> Maybe before Mr. Zomak walks out. <laughs> so. It's not my understanding that an executive session would be appropriate to discuss negotiations around a property except with the group that's authorized to purchase the property. Mm -hmm. So it would not be, so for example, I mean the trust could do that, could potentially be hearing about something if they would potentially be acquiring it, but if they wouldn't be potentially acquiring it, then it wouldn't be a conversation. Is, is that what I'm understanding us to say here? I mean, the Conservation Commission does not acquire properties, so they're not going to be familiar with negotiating strategies. I mean, we know that staff does those strategies. We get that. But I was just got a little nervous because I remember a time long ago when there were uh, committees that thought that they could have executive session about things they couldn't buy. And I while the trust would be in a different position, potentially, most of our committees are not in a position to purchase, and so therefore most of our committees could not have those conversations in executive sessions. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? I, I was referring to the trust. I'm sorry, I wasn't specific right. on that. And I, that's yeah. great. I just so didn't we, we do not others have executive sessions with the Conservation Commission. Exactly. Okay. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that clarification. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So next on our agenda is uh, follow-up on annual town meeting. Um, and so there were three areas that we needed to that are on our agenda for review relative to, to actions at town meeting and, and subsequent work. And so Mr. Bachman wrote us a nice memo. And so if you'd like to take us through that. And sure. Um, I think the last time I gave you a, a sort of detailed memo on every action that needed follow-up from town meeting, uh, this is uh, sort of encapsulates three particular things that were different uh, that were voted at town meeting that we need to take action on or to start to start the process to take action on. First is the $60,000 that was added to the community services budget. Um, and I note that the discussion around this budget item was around um, providing additional support for youth services. And if you recall last year when this happened, we had a number of uh, things that were happening um, Two in particular, one was the hurricane 
in Puerto Rico. And then also there was a question about funding for Craig's doors, and we sort of held off on moving forward on an RFP for this until we had clarity whether those whether these $60,000 funds would be needed for either of those um, situations. They weren't. Um, when those two items were cleared, we went out for an RFP identifying uh, food security for Latino families as being the highest priority. Um, I tend to, we'll talk about it internally with staff, present some options to the select board in terms of how we want to move forward. Again, we will have to follow an RFP process. Um, I've been contacted by a number of people who feel like um, this seemed to be designated for them or something like that, but not explicitly so, but there, there's sort of feeling like that. And I think that we will have to have that as a public discussion uh, with the select board so everybody's clear on what we'll go out for an RFP for. Uh, the second was that there was $53,000 added to the transportation budget um, in or to um, uh, with the um, reporting that there were going to be reductions in services along certain bus routes and that this would be a, a sum that would allow us to restore those services. Um, there are some time constraints on this in that uh, the PVTA has to make some decisions, but we're also still waiting for this uh, state to make some decisions about the budgets for the regional transit authorities. So in, as we monitor both of those things and sort of paying attention to our time frame, there's some other complicating issues in that um, these funds can only be used for um, town of Amherst um, goals and um, some of these bus routes uh, go into other communities and there's a question whether we could support these services even though they go outside the town limits, whether that PVTA would even accept the funds in the, under those conditions. Uh, the chair obviously is the, our representative to the PVTA and there'll be more discussions about that as we move forward. Um, the first item there is to, it, the first issue there is to see is the state gonna step up and provide full funding for the PVTA and the other regional transit authorities or not. Um, and then the third was, um, the action that um, required, uh, requested that the select board um, look into the prom problems created by noises emanating from the firearm range and uh, the impacts of those noises are having on homeowners and visitors and recommend solutions to the relevant governing body. Um, and that I would assume that rev relevant governing body would imply the, the council. So that would be something that would be uh, up to you to take on as an agenda item that you would, um, if you took direction from town meeting to do this in anticipate uh, prior to uh, the council being seated. Uh, the only other item that came out of um, the town meeting was for funds that were uh, given to the school department for specific purposes and that would be uh, handled by the school committee. So I guess the, the quite, there's no question, it's just a matter of um, keeping you updated, keeping these as agenda items, making sure that um, we address them in a timely manner. And as we go through agenda setting, figure out when, you, when, when the appropriate time is to have these public discussions on each of these three items. Mr. Steinberg? You, yeah, you so want. I guess I'm back to the point that I think I raised at the last meeting when we discussed it, and that is uh, on the two spending items first. Uh, whether uh, there are criteria that are being developed for the use of the funds th um, that get into questions about uh, the practicality of the, um, a, a single program that runs for a very finite period of time or a long-standing program that would require future funding in order to maintain the program for the program at all to make sense. Um, and uh, the second is, back to the question that I asked, um, one of the questions I asked Mr. Zomack, where does the role of the select board fit in and where does the role of the council fit in um, as we're now in the transition mode and we dealt with uh, some of the transition questions with the town meeting itself, but one of the things that never came up was um, adding money to the budget for something entirely new, 
which was a subject that I had I've been concerned with, along with any major change in the budget, though it might have a um, significant effect on town operations, and where that bridge came in between the uh, what is ongoing responsibilities of government to maintain the budget and when you're changing the budget so much that it's affecting long-standing goals or long-standing commitments and the last piece in that one is that um, we do have to be cognizant of the fact for uh, the future which we're responsible for at least thinking about in the um, amount of money that is left in the transportation fund surplus um, and uh, that it was severely diminished by the action. It is not something that gets replenished in an easy manner. So uh, I think that uh, we have an extra responsibility for uh, the town and the council coming forward to bear that in mind. So I, I mean, I understand, Mr. Bachman, you're, these are kind of FYIs for us mm -hmm. to some degree, but um, I think they're also um, kind of policy questions to some degree. So um, I wasn't assuming that spent that it was a foregone conclusion that the sixty thousand would be spent necessarily. That it, in fact it may be held um, for the reasons, um, some of the reasons that Mr. Steinberg uh, articulated. Um, I, I would disagree. I, I don't think it was presented, although it did pass, with um, adequate information that uh, made sense to me to act on. There, there were these expectations that somehow the additional um, money for community services the prior year was going to carry over, and it wasn't, and it was added. Um, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what basis we'd be acting on this, and you did say about understanding the needs and looking into this. Um, if certain groups had an understanding it was being added so they would have have those funds available, that would be um, an unfortunate expectation. And the transportation money, I think um, we need a lot more clarity about what we might need it for, and maybe if there is an emergency with a route or something that comes up in the future, we at least would have that authorization, but I, I feel no com compulsion to spend that at all. Um, the third question, which is about the noise, I think we could probably um, maybe give you some direction that would be direction to staff, which is um, how, how we could better maybe monitor what's going on up with the noise situation. Just anecdotally, I've been told you know, it's a lot worse than it used to be. This is summer with long days, so I wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to do some monitoring um, and checking, and then maybe bring, collecting information that um, either we or more likely a future council could act on. So this might be the time. I don't, I don't think the town has a decibel meter, um, but I think the nature of the firearms that have been being used may have changed over the last few years. Um, there was a brief period when I lived at Hampshire Village and I could certainly hear the skeet shooting on a Sunday morning, but if it's changed, if it's really at a level, um, I, I get the part from KP Law about we can't just amend the hours because of the previous, I would want to know what the previous permit was if we even have it because it goes way back, maybe just grandfathered, whatever. But to do some of that research so we're not starting at square one, um, when it is appropriate for the council to take this up, I think there's some some actions that we could do to be to be sort of fair and responsible to that issue. I mean, really, some legitimate concerns about quality of life, and I don't exactly have you know maybe Mr. Moore and others may have some ideas about how you get at that question. So, so I did read this on like the open space plan and done some thinking about it. I did read the memo. How do you see, Mr. Bachelman, your role associated with Article 37? I think it's it's fairly clue on, clear on the money issues, what you've said, what you've described tonight. 
um, there can be some disagreement between the select board as to how mm -hmm. we feel about those particular things. We made our wishes clear at town meeting, which was not successful in terms of mm -hmm. preventing this from being added. And given that then the budget is in fact in your hands under whichever form of government we think, mm -hmm. feel like we're operating under at mm -hmm. any given moment, um, while we might encourage or discourage particular activities, I understand that we don't really have a role there with the money except being updated so that we can continue to share what the community is telling us so we can tell you. Um, and I appreciate that you've made it quite clear that this is not an immediate and now we take the 60,000 and we give 30 to you and 30 to you and everybody's happy. <laughs> it's never been that simple and we tried to make that clear at town meeting and probably not everybody heard it then, so thank you. Associated with the bylaw though, I'm, I'm, I have very mixed feelings about what's being discussed here in terms of potentially moving forward. We are short staffed. We know that for a fact. We don't have anything that's gone away in terms of preparation for anything. And you know, it's not just because we're hoping we won't need any fall special town meetings, but that doesn't mean that there's anything that's gone away in terms of people's tasks. And we know we're short staffed at least two positions. I'm uneasy asking us to go ahead and research a situation in preparation for the council to do something when it's a it's a frustrating and long-term situation for the people who live there and i get that but then i don't see what's different than the next intersection that gets brought to us and the next sidewalk that gets brought to us and you've known for a long time that the roots are heaving up on some particular sidewalk and you need to put that at the head of the line instead of something else and I know that there's this, I, I know we're feeling our way. Like it's, it's not entirely cut and dried what's now versus what's in future. But starting definitely a new project, when we don't have a decibel meter and we also don't have a law that talks about how what the decibels are, we have neither piece of that. Beyond potentially asking if you felt it was appropriate to talk to staff about talking to the range owners and saying, are you aware? You know, I don't know what kind of effective communication they've felt like they've been able to have between each other. Are you aware people are concerned about this? It's on the agenda for the future. You know, be be aware that people are going to keep talking about this. This didn't just go away because we didn't do it at town meeting. But at the same time, I just think of all the other things we're working on, and I feel uneasy if it seems like we're giving you encouragement to go off and deal with that as Ms. Kruger just so kindly suggested, but I would absolutely say, no, please don't do that. So <laughs> how do you see, mm. yeah, how do you see <laughs> what we're supposed to say? I mean, that one I feel more comfortable with saying what we think about it and trying to give some direction as opposed to the money, which we have strong feelings about, but we also know it's not technically our budget. Well, I mean, the, um, the legislative body town meeting voted to call on the select board. So it, it, it was a, a request to you mm -hmm. to take some action or to investigate. You can hear that and say thank you, but we've got a lot of other things on our agenda. You can say, you can give instruction to us, to, uh, to the staff. Um, yes, you, you can give instruction to the staff to do certain things, but I would like to, it if, you know, it'd be, I don't think I'm empowered to take any action independently of that because this was a directive to the select board and I don't have a real intention to take you know, direct staff to do anything on it unless the board says I'd like you to do something on this. Ms. Kerr? Um, I think, I mean, I think this is a helpful conversation. We don't have to start out agreeing on it, but I think this is has a compelling aspect to it, partly because we were asked um, to consider what was going on and what some solutions might be. It doesn't prescribe exactly what we do or how we do it. And I think that the quality of life issues are, at least from a, you know testimony of a number of people, were significant enough that um, it bears some amount of looking into, but I would want Mr. Bach, I would encourage Mr. Bachman to have that conversation with the staff and just what ideas, what is doable with the limited resources that we have. And maybe it's nothing because 
20 other, you know, emergency kind of things have popped up. But I, I think um, I would like to at least know more about the situation if we have the capacity to do that. Um, and maybe part of it is suggesting to the planning board that they look into a revision in the bylaw that talks about, you know, decibels. Um, you know, that, that was one of the missing pieces. So there's a bunch of things I think we could at least be talking about and considering. I don't think it's exactly the same as um, the list we're developing for what's the most important sidewalk and what's the most important intersection. This is a very particular issue was brought to us um, and it wasn't acted on at town meeting. So I feel, I feel, uh, I think it's, a, I think it's important to have at least some consideration of what we could do if it's reasonable to do it. So if I could <clears throat> push back a little and say, we just heard a conversation where a select board member complained about staff making a decision about whether or not affordable housing should be considered for a particular site. And now we're talking about asking staff to make a decision about whether or not they have capacity to look at a particular issue. It's really not feeling that different to me. And so I feel like it was referred to us. We should decide as a group what we need to do. We may not be able to come to a majority opinion on that. But I'm uneasy what I feel is somewhat dumping it on staff to say, we'll take some time to spend some time to think about this when <clears throat> unless we're sure we would want them to do something. I just, I suppose if we talk about this long enough, we could actually talk as long as they might need to talk about it to make that decision and, and f give feedback to Mr. Bachman. But I'm just really feeling uneasy because I'm not seeing a huge difference between this and having a special town meeting on election reform in terms of finance reform. When people say, this is really important to me. I really think this needs to happen in a timely fashion. And we say, no, it doesn't. Um, I hear that this is really important to people, but I'm not seeing the need to do it this minute, although I can appreciate the seasonality issue, just like when we do traffic studies, we want to make sure we're reflecting seasonality. So I'm feeling a little leery. Mr. Teinberg, any comments on the topic? I think that... Uh, how I would ultimately come out on it depends upon um, answers to questions that you don't get if you don't at least start asking a few of them. Uh, because uh, if it turns out that it is very onerous, very costly to obtain the equipment and use the equipment to uh, get uh, any measurable uh, noise level readings, then um, it would, it's not feasible to do it. And I think that we should just ought to know it. If it turns out that there's somebody on staff who says, oh yeah, I'm familiar with this and you can buy um, this piece of equipment and set it up and, um, it'll, um, and the amount is relatively um, small in comparison to things and that um, it's useful for other purposes in the future and uh, it's not terribly time consuming to do that piece of the study. Um, it is worth going forward in part because town meeting asked and if town meeting asked and it is not an unreasonable request, I still, th it, is pro it is worth at least paying some attention. but. More so because I think we heard from a lot of citizens who are very concerned about it. And if we just heard about it in direct contacts to us outside of town meeting, I think we would probably have the same reaction. I mean, what I could do is we could have a, we have not had a preliminary discussion about this among staff. We could have that conversation, see what, what approach we would take, what kind of equipment we would need, what kind of time commitment would be, and come back to you and say, here's the, here's what we would need or expect in terms of resources, both staff time and equipment wise. Is this something you want us to move forward on? Because um, again, it was a request to the select board, so to the, you know, that part of the executive. So I just, if, you, if you said, I don't want you to do anything on it, 
I would take that as the direction, but I would look to you for the direction on this. But mm -hmm. we could take that first step without much commitment. One other thing I would suggest is it might be able to might be able to borrow the equipment if there are other communities that have that type of equipment. Um, so they might loan it to us for a short period of time if they're not busy with it. I don't know how often they use that sort of stuff. Um, I think the other thing, and I think this is still uh, what I would say is part of that initial conversation, and I think I would agree that just at least having that uh, kind of scoping meeting or, or conversation, um, the other not explicitly related to the gun range, but the noise, uh, you know, sort of regulation around noise is fully judgment based currently in our in our bylaw is that okay is it better to have particular decibel levels so you've got measurables um, you know I think that's also a piece of the conversation is independent of whether it's gunfire or any other kind of noise uh, what is you know sort of common practice in regard to that um, so I think that was one of the questions raised you know just in general is that the way our current bylaw around noise and nuisance bylaw was, is is Complaint driven. maybe mm -hmm. needing some additional bolstering, which is maybe potentially independent of this. So I think it just poses that question. It's like, what would it take to sort of find out about that piece? <coughs> and that's, I think, independent of, of the gun range in particular, but it, you know, certainly um, a part of that. But Mr. Yeah. Chairman. And one other um, thing is that uh, those of us who read the Gazette know that Granby has had similar issues, and um, maybe somebody in at Granby Town Government who's given some thought to that or has taken some steps that might be helpful for us to know about. It's another avenue to take. I, I think if uh, Mr. Buckman initiates that conversation, when staff comes back, we have you know some more information and we have a, a discussion, whichever way it goes, we'll have fulfilled the request of the town meeting article by having given it, if we, even if after that second conversation we decide, you know, that's enough and, or if it, or it could go and with continued action steps, I think just having that additional conversation with some more information would fulfill what we've been asked to do. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Not buying, huh? <laughs> I, I'll buy that as long as we continue to recognize, just as I, I think we can count on Mr. Steinberg to bring up, associated with every single thing we do, the charter transition provisions. I'm going to bring up the fact that we're understaffed specifically now, and we already had extra work because of the transition, and to be really cognizant of the fact that of course people want to work on these exciting things and they want to help people have a better quality of life there's no question realistically we can't do everything and so we can do potentially the scoping issue but i just am loath to continue to add to the and here is your priority number 27b um, when we have so many other things going on but as long as you're comfortable with doing this uh, maybe scoping conversation is, is the way then I then that makes sense to me okay. Okay. You, as a way of addressing so you and the Mr. Referral. Steinberg both have your one note now I, I want to look for one for me too <laughs> <laughs> you did affordable housing oh right I <laughs> so thank you for the, the follow-up on those and we'll we'll continue to monitor those and bring those back to the board as as um, as we know more I mean, certainly, you know, budget-related, state budget-related things, and and uh, will s certainly influence our conversation about the the transportation question. So, um, so next on our agenda is the uh, town manager performance evaluation timeline and forms review. One thing I realized that in looking at my packet is that um, what we have is the goals, and then the tool that we've t traditionally used to to rate the goals. But the thing that wasn't in here, but which I have a copy of, not with me, but I got electronically, were the other pieces, which are um, we request uh, town staff, uh, committees, et cetera, to sort of provide feedback to us. Um, we usually, you know, we change who is uh, on the recipient list of the select board email during that time frame. Um, 
um, we also have traditionally reached out to town meeting members. Um, and so uh, those aren't with us tonight. I don't expect to change them other than largely the dates on them, and I will get those out soon to you all to look over. And then I think at our next meeting, we'll probably, um, you know, sort of firm up the, 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 uh, the timeline uh, and, the, and the context of those. But we can certainly, because um, we've all been through this before, uh, remember that we reach out, so we reach out to all town staff um, and we set a deadline for them to reply to us relative to um, providing feedback regarding manager's performance. Um, town meeting members, I believe all the committees and boards, um, and the general public as well. Um, and then we announce that and set what the deadlines are and, and that sort of thing. And usually the deadlines. Well, it'll be interesting this year. I think we'll have to push it. We meet on the 9th. It'll probably have to be later that week or the following week just because of the holiday the first week in July and given that the 25th is our next meeting. But I'm open to hearing from people about their opinions on that and whether we should take a different approach or what. Yes. Which is a lovely segue to uh, what I believe we discussed last time along these lines is that, one, I think we need to make a decision as to whether or not we're doing the same process and I think I argued that it would be a lot easier to just keep doing it the same way this next time but that if we were plan rather than if the select board had been continuing on we would have probably looked at a somewhat different instrument for staff feedback because it has been frustrating for both staff and for us in terms of um, how much value they're feeling like they're getting from it given the time put in to fill out the form. Um, and for us to review them. At the same time, I'm also really frustrated that we don't have the other packet of material here that had notice. not only the dates, but also all those things you talked about, because that's usually what we update at this right. point in the process, is we say, now nah, we don't need to say that anymore and make sure it says this on the website, because actually pretty much by the time we meet next time, we should have already sent everything out. Right. So I guess, if, if everybody agrees that we're fine with just continuing on with the usual process and all that's changing is like a, a June date is changing by two days to reflect the 2018 calendar, that, but we don't remember because we're not looking at it, that we're making it, you know, there's substantive changes. I guess we can just say, just do it. Because I'm, if we wait until the 20, it's too late. Mm -hmm. it, we need to give Pete, we need to get the information out to staff, we need to get the information out to committees because the problem is you send it to a committee chair who may or may not have updated their address with staff and then they forget to send it for a couple days and then other people are out of town and then it turns out nobody ever saw it, much less that they ever discussed it at a committee meeting. So I, obviously if, if people believe that we should not, uh, if we should do something different this year, because we'd like to try something new and exciting here at the last minute. Um, <clears throat> you can pretty well guess how I feel about that, but we can certainly just, I, I'm not averse to discussing it, but what I am saying is if we don't decide that, if we decide to just continue with the normal process, then just going ahead and doing it and executing the normal steps and then making sure that when you're working with staff to get that out, because obviously Ms. Puppel isn't here and obviously Ms. Moiston is doing a million other things now as well as her normal job, um, if they can get, if that's the decision we make tonight, that they can get everything out and then you can get it to us, you know, as soon as it's done. So I have to, I have to apologize because I didn't look at the packet closely for sure, but really in earnest until much later in the, in the weekend. And I didn't realize that we didn't have those additional materials in here, even in the old version of them. So I'm sorry about that. Um, and, and so um, I think what was probably likely is that I had said, oh, I'll update the timeline, which I didn't get to, but <clears throat> there are the other documents that also have dates on them that I think was assumed to be part of that timeline as opposed to part of this material, which is sort exactly. of how I view it, and that's a, a poor bit of communication on my part, so I'll have to uh, you know, beg forgiveness for that. Um, but in, in so feedback from, from Ms. Kruger and, and, and Mr. Steinberg about you know, the process moving forward, I'm happy to, to update those um, rather standard forms now of soliciting feedback from the various groups. Um, 
to include the dates uh, for 2018, and I'm happy to sort of take that action if, if people are comfortable with that. I can certainly share the existing um, before I update them, but try to get them turned around the next day or so. But I'm curious if people want to take a different approach or have, does anyone even recall, perhaps maybe it's the first question, what they looked like? So Mr. Seimer, I'll start with you. I agree with uh, Ms. Brewer's point that at this stage in the calendar and where we are in the process of the transition, that uh, making a major change doesn't make sense. The only thing that I was particularly dissatisfied for all of the years that I've been doing this is the nature of the feedback that we're getting from town employees. and. Uh, you know, I guess my suggestion then would be for Mr. Slaughter as chair, if he feels that he has time and is comfortable doing so, to at least have a brief conversation with Ms. Radway as to whether she has any suggestions on how that is devised and presented and whether there's anything that she might suggest based upon her expertise that might be helpful. In, um, but I think that that's a, um, what I would put into the uh, possible minor improvement slash tweak, but I don't think we should do anything significantly different. And if she doesn't have the time or you don't have the time, then we should just go on. Ms. Kruger? So I, I also agree about not make you know not revamping the whole system. Um, just a couple of things. Um, maybe I'll take them. I don't want to forget them. But um, building off what Mr. Steinberg said, I also have found some of the um, staff feedback forms, the anonymous ones, frustrating because. And, and, the, and we only get a few of these, but people will do the check boxes, but they won't write any comments. And, I, and maybe it's the instruction document that goes out with that that could encourage people to write some narrative, because it's really hard to interpret what it means when it's just, you know, I f even forget the you know, scoring as such, but to just get it checked off, sometimes it's it's negative, but it's like, but why? Or what are you trying to tell me that I can, you know, take an action on? Um, so I'm agreeing with Mr. Steinberg. That was the part that um, didn't work as well. So people, if there's a way to get that feedback and that's more meaningful to us. Um, um, you said, we, I know we sent it to committees. Did we actually send it in the past to town meeting? Yes. Okay, There's I just couldn't remember. I knew you'd remember. Yeah, meeting. okay. And then in terms of the timeline, since we don't have one to look at, you know, I, there's, I don't know how it's going to fall out for, like, when we're going to have to do things. And I know there's, there's two select board meetings over the summer, um, actually maybe just one, where I won't, I won't be here. And so it um, really doesn't affect the calendar of getting this out. I, I agree. It should go out, and I would be happy to authorize you to work with Mr. Bockelman and staff to make that happen, but just um, some of the things that fall on our calendar to do, I would want a chance to look at that and see how it dovetails with, you know, when, when we're, you know, in fact, you need to know when you have quorum or not. And right. Stuff like that. right, no, exactly, and I think that's, that's um, in, in updating the, there's a broader timeline that sort of speaks to all the factors that are involved, and some of that is, um, you know, getting these things out for solicitation from from uh, town meeting and staff and that sort of thing, but the other sort of the back half of that is about our own work. And so I've I've got to ask all of you for you know dates that you won't be available over the summer and and uh, not that those need to be made public, but <laughs> they will potentially sort of uh, alter the calendar a little bit. And and then we may have to come back and have a conversation about do we need to schedule another date or do we need mm -hmm. to. Uh, Push off the final completion of the project process, and you know, by a, a, a meeting or whatever. So, I will, as part of this, um, get that done. 
Yes. So just a couple of notes associated with the process since I felt such ownership of it some years ago is that one of the things with the dates obviously is that we work backwards. And so if we're working backwards, then that tells us how long staff has and how long committees have and how long the public has because we need to have their stuff, obviously, for a couple of weeks, ideally, before right. we do yeah. ours because even though we are probably not going to work on it for two hours a day for two weeks straight, realistically speaking, things will come up in people's lives, and so they need plenty of time rather than assuming everybody can work on it at the weekend of the 18th because that's need just not going to gonna happen. Window we need to have a big window. And so the, as I recall, and I will not pretend that in this particular case my memory is infallible, but one of the things that we changed a couple of years back is that when we sent out the notice, we said, here are the select board's goals for the town manager. We hope you find them useful as you're making these comments to us as opposed to people saying, well, what should I write? And so that they would look to that. And if they choose not to, that's their choice. But that's the kind of tweak we have done in the past to these things. But I mean, largely, the script stays the same. And in fact, when um, Ms. Pupple put the materials together for us last year, she used the 2015 versions just because, and then you know, just marked out the couple of things that needed to be changed. But it just, it just tries to be very clear, you know, when the written comments are due. And obviously these dates are from 2015, so I'm not going to pretend they work for us. It talks about if you have questions, write to the select board. We encourage you to review the goals. And here's the town manager's progress report. Just so that, again, they, ha they have basically the same materials we have to work from, so they understand why we're doing what we're doing. And then if they choose to consider that when they write their feedback or not. And we made sure that one of the the letter to the committee chair says, we realize that you probably aren't going to have a meeting and then have like a group evaluation of the town manager. So you are responsible for getting this out to your individual members who then send it directly into the select board. So we've just tried to clarify what those little piece parts are for people. So, you know, if after you, you work with, I assume Ms. Moist and Ms. Radway, to get that information you know, updated for 18. I mean, I just don't know what else might occur to us as new and different. Or the one, the other thing that Ms. Radway had worked on for us helpfully more recently was also somewhat shocking to those of us who had been doing it for a while, which was that it was allowing for electronic submissions, which is something we had not allowed for in terms of the forms because we were trying to ensure that staff filled out one, and that was one each, one staff, rather one, vote. Than one, staff one vote. And her suggestion to simplify the process by making it available electronically was not approved of by the select board because it wasn't run by the select board. And so I would just encourage that if there's any kind of change like that, that you bring it back to us. But um, in terms of you know redoing some of the questions, one of the advantages to not doing a numeric score is that you're not trying to compare the same rubric from from one year to the next. And so it, it would be OK. We've changed the gender references, for example, Ms. Kruger is, as Ms. Kruger is well aware, um, in some of the questions. So if there's minor updating like that, I'm just not sure, again, being cognizant of everyone's time, that this is probably the year to do it. And instead, it goes on our list of, we've been doing it this way for a while to the council. and. Uh, any shortcomings we identify, we could tell them about. So is the way we did it last year up to speed? We talked about 2015 and 16. <laughs> so, but can we sort of assume that whatever we did last year, we can just replicate it's this year it, once the chair looks through everything and says, yeah, this looks up to date. And once we get the time frame, we can put the, plug those times in. and then. Well, except for the issue that Mr. Steinberg and I were talking about, if there's some part in the direction that might help to encourage more, people yeah I get a that more useful set of comments. don't just check boxes your your verbal your written comments are very valuable maybe just us. add a sentence like yeah that. yeah, yeah. one or two Absolutely. sentences yeah I think if that makes it yeah that's improve easy. that that was really the only substantive I heard yeah it just as a I found well an email with the other documents that I thought we're going to include anyway um, we had uh, public comments due by July 14th last year, which was, I guess, the second Friday of the month. Um, 
So this year it would be either let's see, uh, the tw uh, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13th probably, or we push back a week. So I'll have to look at how that plays out between where we are now, time wise, and and our, our endpoints. So working backwards, of course, you know, in right. sort of the time we need to sort of do the the work we do on on this because it does. You know the the, uh, the good and bad thing about having a large number of things itemized on the goal sheet is then we have to provide comment to you on all of those. So it takes a while for us to go through our process and then synthesize those into a single uh, outcome. And, and um, but we also want to give people enough time to to have an opportunity to respond, which was to, to your point a little bit as well. Um, so I will. Yes, Mr. Steinberg. Yeah, the, the, uh, just to remind all of you who have electronic devices in front of you that if you go on to the town website, um, to our to the government select board page, the FY17 town manager performance review timeline is yes. actually a posted document that is readily available, so that uh, it's it, you know it is there. And, um, you know, the timeline really begins from last year. It began on Tuesday, June 20th at a select board meeting on that day. Um, and then the next day, the staff questionnaires were provided um, in the PDF fillable format to staff. And, and it gives the whole time frame going forward. So this... Um, now, if we're going to be um, using a similar timeline and we're not going to revisit it as a group, uh, you know, I think we can still move forward and be relatively close to where we were. Right. Mm -hmm. right. right. I think we'll be fine if we go ahead and do it this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Slaughter. Make that happen. Be so yeah. authorized. <laughs> right. So, Make it so. That's right. So I will endeavor to, uh, to turn that over. Probably not this evening, because I think we'll be here late enough that that won't happen, but uh, my homework has been defined. <laughs> well, yes. Well, to clarify, I mean, I'm actually not expecting to see anything from you. I'm expecting it no, to no. just proceed a pace, and right. then we'll get the updated timeline in our packet on the 20-whatever. Right. Um, and it will have already, you know, you, you can basi we'll basically Checking be able off. to check off the first three things will have already <laughs> right. happened. Yep. Yep. Right. Okay. Good. Yeah, so I think the only if, thing you if, do tonight. If I do any changes to text that that uh, I want to make you aware of, so that you're just, if you hear from those that would be receiving send it, the, the I'll send you those changes. The, yeah, but yeah, no big deal. That would be probably the entirety of it. All right. Anything else on the review evaluation? Okay. So let's move on to the next item on our agenda, which is the um, charter transition. We have two areas here. Uh, update and future topics for future council consideration. And so, I don't know if, if you had some things mm -hmm. you want to share with us on that. So, uh, I think last time we reported on that, the um, there was testimony before the joint committee on election law. Uh, that committee reported um, the uh, special legislation out of their committee and with a positive recommendation that went to the floor of the house. It's now in the third. It's uh, it's re been reported on the third reading at the house. Uh, from here, and that's a, that's good news because they have to do three readings, and all the reading it's in the third reading, and um, then it will go over to the Senate once the House disposes of it. So it seems to be making its way. They're not holding everything in a abeyance while they'd work on the budget. So um, <coughs> they continue to work it, and we had correspondence from Representative Solomon Goldstein Rose, who and he uh, is continuing to monitor the situation. So I think that's good news in terms of where the legislation is for the, the election. Okay. Mm -hmm. So does anyone else have anything else regarding that? Or So we put on our agenda the sort of topics for virtual council consideration. I think as we think of things, I think it's an opportunity for us to sort of bring them up so we can start making a list of those types of things and and potentially discuss them a little bit. But I'm happy to entertain a topic if someone has one, Ms. Kruger. Well, just, just so it doesn't get lost, last time, at our last meeting, we talked about um, a kind of written response from this body about um, sort of related to the KP Law guidance document on additional town meetings and how we were viewing that. It, it does fit under 
charter transition, and um, I don't believe it's happened yet, but I, having read some stuff in the media about that topic, I would want to encourage us to, to have something that we can look at and review and um, put out as our own, uh, articulate our own position about that. If I could just follow up, since I was kind of pushing around as to how we did these charter transition topics to make sure that we started carrying these things forward. Um, but specifically on that one mm -hmm. is, are you looking for Mr. Slaughter to bring back the cover memo that goes with the KP law? I had kind of thought he was just writing that. And so I just want to be clear on what our expectation is. At least would like to see it. I know right. I'm not no, saying I have to vote on it, but. It hasn't happened yet, right. so I want no, to. I, so that I do need to create that memo, <laughs> that then I would share out and off, and then you can offer suggestions to me on an individual basis, which hasn't happened it, yet. It, it's an expression of opinion, so it would need to be issued at our meeting. Right, and it didn't happen for tonight, so. I, well, I just thought he was going to just do it, so <laughs> that that explains I my. I my thought we would see it either. That's having why communication's been important. Right. Okay, so six twenty-five. Right. So now we'll, we'll add it do. to the 625 agenda. Um, and maybe I thought I heard something like, well, I'll do it and you'll get a chance to look at it, but maybe not. Maybe you were just, but it doesn't matter. No, the, it hasn't the, happened. That was my intention was that you would get a chance to see it in advance of it going out. Um, it hasn't gone out, so. Um, <laughs> and we're not meeting next week. We are not. That's why so it's, it's probably maybe more important that it go out than okay. that it come back. But just, I would like to see it so that I know what. Right. Was before. <coughs> so, if I might ask then, if um, since I since I do like to beat us with the open meeting law stick on a regular basis because we're really good at complying, um, rather than given given the timeline you just indicated, would Mr. Steinberg would I would all of us feel comfortable if just you and Mr. Slaughter just worked on this and got it out the door so that he works on it and then you could give him some feedback so that. It went out because we did discuss it last time. I mean, sure. it's not like we're sure. just saying I'm make something happy. up out of your head. I mean, I, we did talk in general it's terms. It's always nice to have a sounding board or another. Yes, so I'm happy it is to do always that. useful. And I'm sure Mr. Bockelman too can will chime in. So yeah, and so I, I Mr. see Wall it as like can't two complain. paragraphs. I mean, it's not right. I'm okay with important. that. And then okay we wouldn't that. have to put it on the agenda again. Then so I can be the one to come. see. That's right. <laughs> okay. So this is then you'll review it and then it will go out. We won't wait till the twenty fifth. Right. right. Correct. So, so the chair signs off on it. It's good so to go. Right. Okay. Right. So the chair will check in with second to the issue that we talked about five minutes ago. Right. Right. So are there other things that people wanted to bring up relative to uh, charter transition and future topics or anything? Yes. This might fit. Um, I. I mean, it could, if we didn't have these wonderful topics we've added to the agenda, arguably it's a town manager update. But I wonder if, um, although I didn't speak to the town manager directly about including it under this section, we did speak about, for example, the fact that he's working with staff on things like helping people figure out what their district and precinct are, because it's surprising how many town meeting members weren't actually sure what their precinct was, much less what district they're in now. And there's not a one-size-fits-all chart, or there wasn't, at least, that the last time I talked to Mr. Bachman. So, Maybe if you could just plan as as these things unfold, because you're doing so many different things with staff associated with the transition, to say, oh, and this week we added this thing because it just gives it more, you know, people who've been looking for the information mm -hmm. now will get to hear, hey, this one was able to be updated, or we're working on sending Galvin the information at the Commonwealth so he knows what district we're in, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, yeah, so we I did have a meeting with the town clerk and IT representatives to uh, make sure the information got to the state and that our website gets updated with current election information. There is a really nice map that's posted outside the town clerk's office that shows precincts and districts so people can easily identify what district they're in because that's the determining factor. Um, we'll get that up online as well. Um, it's, uh, I think they, the IT did a terrific job on the map. It's very clear and color-coded in, in a nice way. Um, but there are a number of things you know, like um, that will serve us going forward, uh, things such as, you know, we'll incorporate, you know, already on our website we have a number of things like how do I register to vote and things like that, but we don't have our time frames. The town clerk was kind of waiting to see what happened with the legislation, but we have an election process moving forward, so... 
um, given the positive reaction from the Joint Committee on Election Law, I felt like it was firm enough that we could move forward with publicizing the dates on when things are due from everything from campaign finance reform to, or reform from campaign finance um, deadlines to uh, when you would submit your papers, when you need to withdraw your papers, um, things like that. So I'm appreciative of IT working with the town clerk to get that up electronically. So it's in the, the sort of an FAQ, how do I uh, section all on one sheet right now. The, the web page is, is dated because it re reflects a prior election, so it's not up to date. So we'll hopefully get that done this week. That sounds great. It reminded me, um, because we're not meeting next week, I'm pretty confident we're going to get our special act approved soon, and I'm hoping um, if that happens between meetings, I, I would trust that Mr. Bachman would do a news release um, ASAP so that then the community knows, the public knows that those are... Um, the approved election dates as well as, you know, on the website and mm -hmm. the bulletin board and everything else. But um, it probably would happen anyway, but I just wanted to, mm -hmm. I think That's that, good, that good, was, good as soon as we hear um, that that would go out so everyone, the whole community would know that and, yep. um, and trumpets will be sounded. <laughs> go ahead. I, I just wanted to make super clear to my colleagues and to the community at large that when I was talking about those specific things, Mr. Bachman, of course, had been very receptive, was already planning to do those things, and it was just a matter of finding the people to find the time to do it, because we do an amazing job on our website. I mean, people, yes, okay, so it's about the last election, but I mean, we have so much more information on our website than many, many, many other places, and so we are rightfully very proud of that. It's just that now we need to go ahead and add the next set of data to it. Mm -hmm. But it isn't like we haven't been doing an amazing job, so thank you to staff for that. And that map is beautiful. If you haven't seen it down by the town clerks, it'll really help people out. So anything else on that topic? If not, we'll move on to our committee board's appointments and reappointments section of our agenda, which starts out with our bylaw review committee vacancy, and it's partly to see if there's any news from any of the members about finding another person to replace Ms. Moran. Jim. Silence. <laughs> the, the crickets are <laughs> chirping. Um, so we do have a, a charge in our, in our packet tonight, just as a reminder for folks, if, if they're interested, they can certainly reach out to any one of us as select board members or select board. Um, I don't think on the CAF that choosing the by bylaw review committee is probably a choice of the committee. So mm -hmm. it would be best to, to reach out to select Jack board at amherstma.gov um, to, uh, to uh, offer your services if that were the case. Um, but we do need to fairly soon find that third member. Ms. Kruger. We asked the um, currently serving members if they have ideas as well, because sometimes they have a network of people. That's a good question. I have not. I can ask them. Yeah. Is there other question or comment on that topic? Yes. Just that it, uh, anyone listening at home, I hope you will read the charge itself because it is quite explicit in terms of what we need the person to do. And enthusiasm is important, but enthusiasm <clears throat> won't be sufficient. It will be, uh, it's a rather dedicated, specialized type of task. And we really appreciate the three people who were doing it, the two people who continue doing it, and hoping to find a third that can fit in with that. And there are also already minutes posted online for people who are curious about the, the conversations they've been having so far. So it's, again, excellent job with staff support and getting materials up so that people have an idea of how that's actually working. Ms. Bruce, since you brought it up, if I might, um, just so people understand, uh, just to unpack that a little bit, um, we're looking for people who have municipal government experience, knowledge, or municipal law, um, municipal finance. So um, it, it, it uh, requires some amount of um, worker life experience with local government to be able to help with a thorough bylaw review, and that's, I think, why you were saying. Thank you for being expressing that much better than I did. 
So I'll um, move on to the to the next topic under that uh, area of our agenda, which is the status of extended extended committee board terms or extending, I should perhaps say. Um, so there's the downtown parking working group, the Amherst Center Recreation Working Group, both of which had explicit end dates originally uh, in their charges. Um, and I think we sort of tacitly took this conversation up uh, when we were thinking about appointments, um, but we didn't, I think, expressly sort of extend them uh, with a formal sort of alteration of the charge, which has a specific uh, date on the end of them, I believe. So uh, those charges are in our um, in our packet of materials. And then the the third one that's um, I'm quite sure we're, why we're grouped the way we are, but um, is the dog park task force, um, which has a I believe it. Look at that one again. I don't know that it had a date. It just said 18 months. Yeah, I don't see the date. But it didn't say. There's no date showing when we voted it. <laughs> so pick the 18 months you prefer. It's the ones they didn't meet didn't count. I don't know if that's the case, but but I think all three of those we, we may need to take a more uh, explicit uh, <coughs> point of view on relative to those and relative to our conversation about maintaining quorum in, in, in our existing committee structure during the transition period. Um, so, having sort of phrased that, um, I think for the dog park task force, they're nearing the end of their work, but at the same time, they're not quite finished, and, and so they're in the process of uh, working on securing some funding so the town itself doesn't have to come up with uh, some of the funding, um, so they're doing grant applications, et cetera, et cetera. I think for the uh, Amherst Center Recreation Working Group, um, in a similar circumstance, they've currently engaged with a, a consultant. We got some funding for a master plan of recreation space in, in the center of town. That process is ongoing um, and should be largely completed, I think, this fall, if I recall the timeline um, on it. But some of the dates have changed a little bit, but I think this fall is, is the expectation given the capacity of, of more of the town to take on the meetings and, and presentations than it is for the consultant. Uh, and then the third one is the, the downtown parking working group, which, which had an explicit end date. And, and so there's differing opinions about where that one is and whether it is time to let that one go or not go. And so I think some, some conversation about that may be uh, appropriate. So as part of agenda setting, one of the things we discussed was making sure that these committees were all advised that we were going to be talking about this tonight and not that they were compelled to attend, but just so that they didn't feel blindsided to hear that it was going to happen. So I believe that that happened based on our discussion of agenda setting. So that would be one point um, if that actually happened. Um, I've also made a note on our list that we don't have yet that's topics for future council consideration. I'm thinking like clipboards or something. I don't know what we're doing with our iPads or whatever to keep track of those items for our parking lot, so to speak. Um, not that we're talking about parking, that we really need to encourage the council to have a template because here we are looking at three things that are kind of th Tell three things and kind of two things and they're just all kinds of things. And um, it's fine, it's really totally fine that things like working groups are established by staff and are not subject to, in this case, a select board vote, the same way downtown parking working group was. It's just, you know, they don't have a date. <laughs> Some little things like that would be really helpful, like when they start did meeting, how they got appointed, who was on them, et cetera. So, you know, that's just a future reference thing, something we never quite got around to, but it gave us a perfect set of examples associated with it. Downtown Parking Working Group, I struggled with in terms of trying to track down the old information without digging too far through my file cabinet. Um, and it was, it was strange because it drug out for a long time before we got the charge finalized. Then it drug out for a long time before it actually was called together to meet for the first time. It took months after we approved the charge for um, staff to have the time to bring together the first meeting. And so it, where that, that first year went um, 
when Mr. Bag was still here with us, it, it's a little hard to track exactly how that worked. And then when, as you indicated, when we talked about extending the committee appointments and we came to agreement on that, it was not my under, I consider those two separate things. One is, for example, downtown parking working group, even though we thought the charge was expiring on June 30th, 2018, although it doesn't explicitly say that here on the charge, um, that doesn't mean that the people can still be asked, you know, are you good with continuing? Because you may or may not actually have your charge be over <laughs> on June 30th. And so I, it's not a bad thing that they ended up getting the same email that everybody else got associated with that. One of the things that I had pushed for, which is not necessarily what we're talking about today, but in terms of history associated with downtown parking working group, is I wanted it to be a short time frame so that we could make some concrete steps. You know, this is how much we could get done, this is how much we're going to do in future, and then eventually we developed TAC, and no matter how we feel about how TAC may or may not be functioning in exactly the way we expected it to at this point, one of our goals at the time had been that it would become under that umbrella. We may not be exactly in the place we wanted to be associated with that, but nonetheless, I was thinking, and I felt like we were thinking as a group, that Downtown Parking Working Group was going to stop at a point and not be an ongoing thing. But what I, what, what I mean by that is not just, they just stopped meeting one day, it's that I know that they have some recommendations coming to us because we talked about a hearing that we were scheduling. We talked about that at a pre-town meeting session. We talked about what the topics would be, and it has been legally noticed, and we were going to get a copy of that in our packet after it went to the newspaper, so we'll want to make a note of that, too, for the 25th, because I know it's, it was indicated that the first time was going to be this past Saturday that that public hearing was noticed, and we were trying to figure out the easiest, most efficient way of putting that out there, that it was in the newspaper, because despite what the newspaper publishers tell us, no one actually reads the legal notices, but a lot of people in the community care about these things. So we're having that hearing on the 25th, correct? And so it would make sense to me that we have recommendations that inform that hearing on the 25th, ideally, that we read before we show up on the 25th. And then there might be, after that, a period where downtown parking working group meets in response to however the hearing went and then also says and here are the other five things we really wanted to work on and here you go we're done rather than saying we're going to continue meeting until some infinite time period or the town council decides because I this is one that I felt like we were trying to finish um, and then with future recommendations that may or may not be taken up by a different group. So in response, I get, um, that was the grand concept, and I'll tell you what is actually happening with the downtown parking working group, and it is always, um, we've been meeting pretty much twice a month for the two-year period, and always with the awareness that this was a working group with a finite kind of, if not a date, not an ongoing forever group. Mm -hmm. That's always been clear with the parking working group. Um, the main pieces of work we've done is there have been two sets of recommendations to the select board, one that was acted on and implemented last fall, and then one that you got the first look on with the hearing date for June 25th. The other kind of um, fork in the road is that uh, Mr. Bachman has come a couple times recently and met with the parking working group and uh, spent the last couple of meetings fashioning a very detailed memo has already gone out, which is more administrative things that's not subject, doesn't need a hearing, doesn't come to this board. So that's been the main work, but part of that and part of the work over the last year is um, the request for capital funds for a uh, parking consultant to help with a parking management plan and to do a, a parking count update, which we had always intended to do. So what the parking working group would like is to use the time over the summer to uh, work with staff on developing the scope of services and what will be the RFP that will go out and be included to some degree as the manager sees fit in the selection process for that parking consultant. At that point, there, the next round of things that are, are gonna happen, I'm guessing time-wise, will come to the council. So the reason to extend is 
to see this through to getting that expertise on board to help with a set of tasks that have been laid out and talked about for a while. So right, eyeballing it, it's more likely that that person would come on board in the early fall, not in the summer, because part of it's the timeline for the RFP, which we don't have exactly yet. Staff's working on it, and then just um, when would consultants reply? Probably not the third, you know, there's August and so early September, and getting through that process. So um, that's what the downtown parking working group would like to stay on, to be involved with this sort of a completion of a set of work. Um, we've sketched out a couple of meetings this summer. I think there's two more meetings, and then um, we don't have a fall or a September date, but assuming that there'd be a, maybe a couple of dates to do that finishing up. So that's where I think that committee would find it useful to be extended, and we did get the same holdover letter for our appointments as the other committees. I realize the charge doesn't jive with that, but um, I was informed by Mr. Bachman who was gonna come up for discussion tonight. I did not know that that was to be communicated, um, nor did I actually think it was necessary given that we had the holdover memo about our appointments. So to me, this is a discussion about adjusting the charge. So would you suggest that sort of those particular tasks that are remaining be sort of made explicit within the charge and that be? No, I just think we're under the existing charge that if we have to adjust the date because it said two years and it was an arbitrary date and it, trying to match that up with how long things actually take that we just move that out. Any comment, Mr. Steinberg? Uh, You're not required. <laughs> no. He's thinking heavily, though. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to attach it to the next item to talk about, which is dog park. Yeah, I was like, that's the one I'd well, like that on. <laughs> Figure out how to do that. Then I'll talk more about parking, because I'm not one to talk about dog park no. yet. No, I think we should stay with parking. I'm sorry. I, did, I was just trying to connect the two in my head, but I think we should stay with where we're at. And uh, I'm willing. To, I, I think I agree with what you were just saying, so I'm not going to repeat. So I don't think I understand a couple of things. And so maybe once I understand them, then I can agree or disagree with them. So one, I believed, based on agenda setting, that all these committees were being told that we were talking about this and that they were not required to come, but they needed to know about it. And it sounds like that didn't get communicated. So that's unfortunate. Well, I, just, I did inform did. Ms. Kruger. Yes, that we would be talking about it today. Yeah. No, you did, and you were very clear. I didn't thus know what that expect, what that, if there was that expectation, then maybe I didn't understand. Okay, so I wasn't not there doing was, it, but I wasn't understanding that. There was a there was a miscommunication there in terms of what, at least what I thought was happening associated with agenda setting. So there's that. So fine. Um, the other part of it is I'm not understanding. If you're asking that the downtown parking working group, which is in fact missing members. Um, is needing to work specifically beyond the hearing that's coming up, which you know is right is coming right up, is needing to work on the scope of services, the RFP with staff to do to create the best possible RFP for the consultant, or if you're asking that you will work with that consultant once they actually start, because I, I, my opinion will change a lot depending on where we're, what we're talking farmer, about. Unless something changes, and then I guess they would have. Somebody representing it would come back and talk about that, but to get through the selection process for the consultant, because there's going to be a, a couple of months when the consultant comes on board of data gathering, and I mean, yeah, they 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 should be working with the committee, but there's there's going to be a point um, when we're we're going to be there's going to be a point where we're going to be be done. I don't know what that point is. Not like oh, well, now we have a consultant and there's you know, a, a 10 month period when they're working with us, I guess it would be up to this group or a future um, council to decide if they wanted that particular group of people to continue to work with the consultant. There's an awful lot of knowledge in that group or if they would wanna change the membership. I would argue that we do the holdover until 
I'm going to say December, we don't know for sure, as we've done with the rest of the committees. I think there's enough to do, and I think then there's a decision-making point of whether it's that group or, or a different group that continues, because I don't know who would work with the consultant if not a group immersed in parking issues. But I don't really, I haven't really, I just assumed we were on until December, so that gets us through the bulk of the work. Um, I would assume I will not be on the committee after I'm no longer on the select board because I fill that slot. They, it's a seven member group, there are six members. Right now there's one vacancy. Yes. So, perhaps what I was referring to is that the original designation of members is not currently filled in exactly the same configuration, but that that's often, one of the that things often that happens. changed yeah. over time. Um, so while we're obviously arguing about this, um, I am, yeah, I'm actually not assuming thing, I don't remember the exact wording of the email continuing people, but it's not like the new council is going to be making all these decisions on December 3rd. So to say, I assume that we're continuing to function, it, actually you're continuing to function indefinitely until the town council decides that they're doing something differently. And so that's one of my levels of, did you, if you had something particularly on that, I'd be happy to only defer to you, Mr. Steinberg. Yeah, no, I, since I was one who wrote that recommendation and therefore the wording is in my mind. Thank um, you. What we said was that we would continue terms that were, that were coming up for expiration until replaced by the council or resignation. And um, the, um, and I actually did talk to several members of the um, reformer charter commission and they were comfortable with that um, as being consistent with their intent. But what we have is an additional problem is what do you do when the charge to a committee itself is ending and that's what we're really struggling with here and that is why i'm arguing those are two separate issues because one is if the charge no longer exists then it's not really relevant that you got the continuation letter because the continuation letter getting a continuation letter that truly no one thought through before they sent out in terms of it going to time limited committees does not mean that it's the compelling document. It, to me, it's for as long as, which could potentially go all the way, as you indicated with your writing associated with the council or resignation. I am wondering about the line more specifically associated with if the, only, if the main task to be done, other than getting through the hearing and deciding which of those things we are actually going to do based on the recommendations and the public input, et cetera. That beyond that, the other thing is working on an RFP and scope of services. That's not normally something committees do. Committees don't have any, shouldn't generally, by practice, do not have any say in the selection of consultants. Occasionally, a member or two is in occasionally included in that process. And I'm feeling uncomfortable that while I sense this great deal of ownership of the Downtown Parking Working Group with all their amazing work, at the same time, the consultant doesn't belong to the Downtown Parking Working Group. It belongs to the town manager. And while the town manager may well wish to include some members of the Downtown Parking Working Group in working on the scope of services, et cetera, I feel like it's straying from the initial thought, and it's not something we do with other committees. And so I try and explain it to me in a way that doesn't make it seem like it conflicts with everything else we do. So if I might, I think in terms of ownership, I sense that you have ownership over the charge and that you had it in your mind that this would be two years and damn it, it was going to end in two years. I don't, I don't think that makes sense. And I can name other groups, I, and people have <coughs> referenced other groups um, where they were very involved in selection, including um, fire DPW with their consultants. So that's really up to the manager to decide right. how much involved or not involved. I would move actually that this committee 
be continued, in t that the charge be continued into July 1st, 2019, but as Mr. Steinberg explained, um, were the council or resignations to happen prior to that, that the membership could change, but I think it would be appropriate to extend this through the period of time when the consultant would be doing their work, and I'm guessing at a date, but we usually end um, our appointments on July 1st, of the year, so I think it would be appropriate to extend the charge to July 1st, 2019. That's not that much longer than a lot of things we thought were gonna wrap up and be short term, and um, the amount of work and getting momentum on this committee, and yeah, I, I do have some ownership having suffered through the parking committee, it's really hard work, and to just say thank you very much, you're done, everything that you've learned about parking and your investment, it's just over because we only wanted you to do two years and that's over, so thank you very much. Here's your hat, what's your hurry? I, I think it warrants an extension. Mr. Steinberg. Okay. Um, I th close to being there, but I think that what I would be more comfortable with is something that's a little bit more complete, extended until, whatever you said, June 30th, uh, or whatever, July 1st, whatever, or whatever we, it is, it. unless um, amended by the council. Totally. Making it very explicit yeah. that the council has, has, can um, amend that date, terminate the committee and the charge um, without waiting until the date that we put forward because I don't want to take anything away from their authority. I don't either. That helps me make progress with this because that's exactly true. I mean, on the on the one hand, we, we just kind of all accept that the council's going to do what the council does when it comes to committees and boards because they have that authority under the charter to do that. But to make it explicit so that members of committees know that going in because I am concerned about all of the process that led us to the point of having this charter pass and then still having parking work in somewhat isolation, which is what we traditionally did for decades prior to Downtown Parking Working Group, where an internal working group with occasional members of the public that was not subject to open meeting law just did stuff. And then it eventually came to the select board. We were really trying to avoid that happening again. And so as long as you know, it's still part of the committee process as long as it is clear that the council has this choice and explicitly clear in addition to what authority is already in the chart and that the intention of the downtown parking working group and, and I totally disagree with the characterization that you would leave as the select board designee because there's obviously not a town council designee until we rewrite the charge and so I would think that actually you would stay is You're stuck yeah is <laughs> nice try though um is that um that it needs to be clear that just as we received regular reports here, that until the council figures out how they're doing that with committees, that this is one that's really actively working that needs to be in concert with the town manager in particular, but also with the council's where it's just because everybody loves to talk about parking. And so it just, it needs to not be off on its own somewhere. And so as long as we feel like that won't happen it's moving forward, I mean, we're not letting it happen now, but that it's not likely to, to dribble off that way off to the side and then have people come back surprised if we put the explicit part in there about unless amended or whatever wording you'd like. By the council, I'm good. Maybe with that. we're developing a template for how do we want to amend the other two charges because I think by repeating the language that's in the sort of holdover letter mm -hmm. and the memo that Mr. Yes, um, pulling Steinberg, out that exact that we can, language. That's we can do, I mean, the, the dates may be different, but I think we basically have now created a rationale and a template that we can use so that we're kind of thinking about all three similarly. So I'm going to uh, offer the following that we had. Phrasing offered, and someone can make it into a motion, but it's moved to extend the term of the downtown parking working grouping until 6 30, 2019, unless amended by the council. Was that the sort of phrasing I heard? Yes. Mm -hmm. Would someone like to move that? Did you say June 30th, 2019? June 30th, 2019. 
Sure, Unless sure. admitted by the council. So, so moved. You, so moved. I'll there, second. And there's a second. Is there further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And so that's unanimous with one absent. Yes. So on, down t on the dog park, um, I'll be right back. yeah, I'm going to take a break. Uh, on the dog park, uh, it was an 18 month charge. Their first meeting, I checked the minutes, uh, the stack of minutes, and their first meeting was on June 12, 17. So I think we could recognize if we wanted to that it was an 18 month charge and that it began with its first meeting and that it's uh, therefore. We don't have to do anything, and it goes till 12, 12, 17, which either means that it's not our property or that the task force itself could come back to us and ask to have it extended because they want to have a little bit more comfort zone if they need it. But I'm not entirely convinced we need to do anything. Yeah, so I would agree if you found that their first meeting was June of 2017. Um, That was April. In April when we formed it. I think it was June because we, since Mr. Pistrang is on this committee and he was kind of busy with town meeting, that probably took up most yeah, of they May. Didn't, they didn't begin their work. But I'm not sure. So it, it depends upon if we decide that the 18 months extended based upon the date of when we adopted the charge or when they f began the work. Yes. I guess I'd feel a little better if we came up with a date because no one knows where to count the 18 months from since there's no date on the charge. So, um, and as often happens, we establish a charge, then a couple months later, we establish members, then a couple months later, they actually start to meet. And so um, it doesn't really seem fair to hold 18 months against them from the day we signed, we voted on the charge. So um, maybe what makes sense is to fill in, is to come up with a date that we think makes sense and use the same language that we just used for working group in terms of unless the council decides otherwise because we have no reason to believe at this point based on the information we've been given quite recently that the dog park task force is going to have suddenly this whole different thing happen and so they're really just getting through this process and so if we say if we pick a december date because that makes people feel better about the 18 months unless the council but then that way the idea is you know it's over or do we want to say July how about, again? How about June 30th again, knowing that if they feel, if, if in fact the work's wrapped up, it can end it's sooner. Over. Yeah, right. It and doesn't have like, to continue. It's giving them another month because they want to pick the doggy play structures or whatever. Right. I could live with that. Someone like to make that motion? Which I have is moved to extend the term of the dog park task force until June 30th, 2019, unless amended by the council. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Let me make my notes here. Amended. Uh, is there further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 So that's also unanimous for one absent. All right, so. So where does that leave the working group? So it's my understanding. Okay. Just feel free to just talk, Alyssa. It's okay. So, thank you. So it's my understanding, recollection, vague remembrance, that the Amherst Center Recreation Working Group was never intended to be a charge that was owned by us, um, that it was it was staff just explaining to us, this is this wonderful idea we have, these are the people we're gonna put on it, this is what we're gonna do, isn't this great? And this was a great way to do it rather than to just you know tell it to us, to let us look at it in writing, but it was not subject to our approval. 
and it was not our decision as to how long it would last because it's simply something that staff is doing, except they are subjecting themselves to open meeting law, as I recollect. So where are we with this? What is this thing? What is this body? So in looking at the charge, it's, you know, the first sentence says the working group will meet for a period of up to one year. <laughs> you know, other than that, though, if you go to the so bottom, <laughs> we were optimistic. Um, at the end, it says may engage a design consultant, conduct the assessment, hold meetings with the consultant to develop a schematic design plan and preliminary cost estimates. That's, and the design consultant would help to prepare the report with recommendations. So that part is still in process. And so um, I think we were optimistic. I mean, I think in a perfect sort of circumstance, a year would have been an appropriate amount of time. But I think given the membership of the group, as well as you know the other competing interests for time of the staff and, and membership, um, you know, it's just taken a little longer. Um, so I think that that. So is there, and, and I guess I'm looking to the town manager as well for this, is there any reason, given that they are subjecting themselves to open meeting law, which of course is a wonderful law that we all love ever so much, but um, that we go ahead and just treat them, this, treat them as though they are one of these things, just so it's less confusing overall. Treat them overall. all the same way. Yeah. Just treat them all the same way and say June 30th, 2019, and again, if they say, hey, we're done, good on them. Maybe we add this to, you know, note, note to future council. I think the intent of making these appointments sh or these charges short was don't drag this on. This, this should be able to happen in a year, but it often just isn't the way things happen. And we know that the municipal work takes a long time. It's complicated doing the appropriate amount of outreach. And then we have citizens who get really involved in this stuff and there's, and they put extra time and energy in. So, you know, it's great to encourage it to get finished. Sure, like it's, if we gave them a three year, then they, maybe the assumption was then they'd take three years to plan it. And if we made it short, they'd do it really fast. But um, it's just not realistic. I agree. It's one of those, well, the, the old saw is that, you know, work expands to fill time allotted. And so that can happen. Um, I think the, the other intent here, and I think this may be the, the more practical thing to do, is to articulate for these sort of things where we want it to be time limited, is to articulate the as best as possible the sort of um, deliverables. Yeah, what the product is that means you're done. You know, and maybe hint at an expected yeah. timeline, right. but not forcibly require a, a timeline may be the way to go. but. Um, so just to offer some suggested language that someone could move, um, move to extend the term of the Amherst Center Recreation Working Group until 6-30-2019 unless amended by the, by the council. So we want to make that as a motion, is that? So moved. There is second. second. All right, so motion and a second is there for the discussion. Yes. So the further discussion includes the fact that as completely different from each other as all of these different charges are, I feel like it's really important that we update the charge documents themselves to where next to where it says time limited on the two that say time limited to give the date and the vote date of today because otherwise expecting people to go guess which select board meeting at which we did this um, seems like a lot to ask. And so we can say on these that we voted, and um, we could do it three different ways, and then we can try out which template we like the best, so that in future, when somebody looks back at this, they say, oh yeah, so they voted on June 11th to extend it to June 30th, and that'll be great. And a little side note associated with parking working group, as if I didn't make it clear enough during all these conversations, yes, the idea was it was not to expand to fill the time allowed, because we were, in fact, not getting going on it and so that was one of the reasons that I pushed for the time limit to uh, give it a little more oomph to make it happen and you know and, and it did start happening in lots of meetings and lots of actions took place but if we could actually make sure that the committee charges themselves 
get updated to show these things. And I, I, obviously, Ms. Pupple's not here to do that for us, but um, if they could, if staff could pull that out and do that, I think that would be helpful. Yes. Just for clarification, the only thing I'm, we can do, we can do is what you're saying is add that the action taken tonight to yep. say what the termination. Yep. We're not going to redo all the charges yeah, or anything. No, just no, no, no. add them uh, updated as of June 11, 2000. So you know whether you squeeze it down here okay. or you type you it with an it. asterisk over there. It'll be in three different places because there's three different models on these charges <laughs> exactly. from 2015, 2016, 2017. Then but. everybody can decide what they like the yeah. book of for okay. future. We can It'll do that be too. lovely. So if you could remind me about the responses outstanding and effect on quorum topic. Um, so I don't have any update on you. What the, okay. the idea on that was if there were any committees that needed appointees appointed to them. Oh, all right. So there are no committees in that case, but I don't have a, like a list of who's responded yes um, oh, or anything like that. We, we, we sent out letters to everybody. Uh, most people have said, yes, I want to continue. But a lot of people haven't, but that doesn't mean they, you know, some people are saying, oh, I just found that, I got one today, I just found this in my inbox, I meant to tell you that we're going to continue, but we're sort of assuming that they're continuing unless they say otherwise. Uh, Mr. Bogman, just my, my recollection is in the past it took a couple of reminders as well to right. um, get those to finally come in, so there's, there's a certain nag factor that happens. Yeah. Well, and the critical question for us is, are, is any group below quorum? No. And that's that we, and that, know of now. that we know of at this point, right? And that's that's the ongoing well, question. Is, you know, it, once you actually get responses, are, are right we because the staff liaisons would inform us if there was a situation like that. The only group that that might come into play is the board of registrars, um, where and that's a little bit of a unique situation um, in that there's it's it's quorum plus one, um, so uh, we will have be have a change of town clerk obviously uh, we will have an acting town clerk during the month of uh, july um, and then there's a designee from the democratic party i believe each party gets to designate someone um, whose term expired um, and because it sits in a different category from all the other ones where you get to this is an activity form this is somebody who gets nominated that that's a slot we might need to um, solicit someone for or leave vacant or a, that's a question we'll have to talk about yeah associated with that particular one that's a concern because although for all we know they got the same letter everybody else got the reality is that we don't get to just pick that person as you just indicated Democratic and Republican parties get to nominate a certain number for each side and so then and then Frequently, they didn't actually do the task they were assigned to do, and so then Ms. Burgess would give us a list of potential people just from her knowledge of over the years and people who'd worked at voting booths, et cetera. But that's why we can't just extend that one because we need to know back from the Democratic Party and also. Um, but it's not a typical CAF thing because of the Democratic and Republican thing. And I do think quorum plus one is particularly an issue in that case because with the summer and with um, it being a, you know only having the small number on it to begin with, we may well have signature challenges, et cetera, associated with the elections because it's just such a much bigger election and they have to draw the names for the ballot order. And there's actual, they staff to do stuff this summer. It's a particular time of year that they haven't traditionally had to act during um, in comparison because now the whole calendar has changed associated with review of signatures, et cetera. And yeah, I do think it's important that as people get back to us that we know that, because you'd given us the report before, but the other thing is that I traditionally found when I was working on committee appointments is that where there were many, many people who had no idea when their terms expired. And so there were people who thought they were done in June and stopped coming to meetings <laughs> whose term hadn't actually expired yet. So, and I appreciate that staff does a lot of this, but not all the committees have staff. So um, we may run into some glitchy things just because there is no <coughs> control over all this particular situation. But I appreciate you letting us mm -hmm. know as, mm -hmm. as it becomes obvious that we're having issues in some particular right. body. So with the Board of Registrars, it's a four-member committee. So yeah. quorum plus one is a four-member committee. So it needs to be fully, and st fully st staffed. So, I mean, fully um, populated. populated, yeah. Mr. Steiner, I, I do think that it's worth just 
taking a step back and reminding ourselves what the charter actually says about multi-member body appointments and um, it is a real different process mm -hmm. after there's a council because it's actually except for the planning board and the zoning board of appeals the town manager makes the appointments in con after having received um, input from a resident advisory committee then submits them uh, the names to the council and if the council doesn't act within 30 days then it's confirmed so it's going to be a very different process going forward and uh, managers going to have to sort of have a plan of how to go forward so what we're really trying doing for committee members is saying they continue um, and uh, but it's, it's really up to the council to because council hasn't confirmed anybody so what we're essentially saying is that they have the opportunity to kind of go back on it all but it, it, it's not an entirely clear process and it's going to have to really be one of many issues that um, has to be thought through as far as how the transition is going to occur Yes. Right. I mean, this is one of those things that the council is going to have to struggle with. They don't. We don't know what committees they're going to want. They may want to create of their own body a subcommittee on dog park or on parking. Dogs parking cars. And and they and some councils have had a subcommittee on parking because it's a contentious issue. So they want they want to take ownership of it. So we don't know which of these committees they want to. There are some designated in the charter, but there are all the other committees um, are at their will basically. So I just, since you said that, I mean, beyond the general educational effort that we are continuing to do here, I want to just be sure that what you're, of what you're not telling me, which is that you're not telling me that this has anything to do with the Board of Registrars, because it doesn't have anything to do with the Board of Registrars. And that has nothing to do with the town manager's appointment. The Board of Registrars is a separate animal. But then the other item is for people who are continuing, whether because we've continued them, we've extended their term, or their term wasn't up until 2019 or 2020 anyway, it's my understanding that I, from, I don't have it right in front of me, but it's my understanding from the charter that we tell the council, here's all the people you got, which by then we'll have a real list because we'll know who's continued or not, but it isn't that each of those people that's currently on the Conservation Commission has to be brought forward by the town manager to say, can they really stay until 2019? I mean, the council might, the commission's perhaps not a good example because of their legal authority, but the council can decide, like you said, about having a parking committee and whether they choose from this group or they choose from that group or whatever they choose from. But it's not as though at their first meeting in December, they're going to sit down and approve all the current committee members because they don't know what they're going to want to do. And so it's only new people that the town manager is going to need to take to them in the short term until they figure out what they I, want. I think that's right because what we said was um, it had to do with people whose terms would have were to expire on June 30 of this year. right that we were holding them over under those circumstances. And that we're assuming and, the others are um, held over anyway. The way we worded the motion, council could say we don't want those holdovers to continue to serve, or they could say nothing, or right. the manager could reappoint them. It's a whole series of option steps that really aren't never got outlined. I don't think need to be outlined, I think, yet. I think that's a transition issue manager needs to um, work with um, in a way that is functional f going forward. Screw. Sort of along the lines of, you know, note to future or letter to future council, um, it might be worthwhile if a subset of this group offered when the council was ready to come in and just talk about committee appointments, how we did it, what we looked at, how we dealt with the transition and what lies ahead. I mean, some of it I think Mr. Bachelman can do, but I think the people who have been, you know, which could be pretty much anyone on the select board, but to offer um, to have that as an item when they're ready to talk about a 
because there's a lot there right. and, uh, and a lot of experience and knowledge and also issues you know to be for clarification this is where we left it for you but this is how we ran the committee appointment process and you'll have to figure some of this out yourselves I don't know quite how to break it to you, but that's chapter six, and it's at least five pages long of what we are writing to them, in addition to being available to talk to them. Because I think it's really important that we give them at least something to start with in writing, because we have all this institutional knowledge of how we've been doing this for a while. So in addition to volunteering showing up at one of their meetings, I think it's really important we write some of this down. I mean, some things we may not get to, but... Uh, I don't know, it might not be chapter six, but I'm talking a couple of pages here because I think that that's really something the whole council needs to see in writing in addition to, like what we did, as opposed to just, here's a great verbal report and they're gonna be going, wow, there's like a lot there. Um, I'm offering to do the verbal. <laughs> <laughs> After you write. No. Yeah. Document. Yes. We'll sort that out. Is there anything else on the, on the topic of committees and boards appointments and reappointments right now? Not that we've done and a fair amount, I'm just We're saying. planning to carry that forward. Yeah, we'll have to, I, I think there'll be, you know, continuing conversations in that area. I mean, I just think that there'll be topics mm -hmm. that come up or we'll want to articulate points of view or, you know, per, pertaining to how we inform the council. I think there's lots of ways that, that uh, we can visit that and appropriately so. To be helpful, to be able to be helpful to them. Hopefully. Right. Because um, that's certainly one of those functional aspects of town government that needs to function fairly quickly and well, and so the more we can help the council to do that, I think, the better for everybody. It's also less visible. Yes, we bring them forward in a public meeting and we do the appointment, but the process of the interviews and how we do it and how we, the application, and right. there's a lot of moving parts that happen at a staff level or, or behind um, the, the public part of the action. Right, no, absolutely, and I think that it's not well known outside of sort of. Unless the, you've worked on it. Right, unless you've worked on it. All right, so let's move on to our uh, licenses, public way and metered parking reservation section. We have a consent calendar which has a few um, licenses on it, so. Unless there's any corrections to that, I would take a motion. Just one item, and I move to approve the item listed on the consent <laughs> calendar for the June 11, 2018 agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 I did say good And so that item has passed. So next up in our agenda is uh, the town manager report. Mm -hmm. Do you have things to share with us? Sure. Um, two things to report. Um, we had representatives from Penn State University and State College Pennsylvania visit um, uh, UMass and town officials were invited to share uh, our experiences on a number of things, uh, and they shared their experiences in State College. State College is a larger community. The, the town, State College itself, uh, the borough, is about the same size as Amherst, but there are surrounding communities that create a larger metropolitan area. Um, and, and, but many of the same issues that we're facing, they are facing, uh, minus the marijuana issue. Um, but uh, the one interesting note, they flew the Penn State jet uh, to visit us, and then they were gonna go fly the Penn State jet to University of Vermont to visit them. And I guess that's what you get when you have a great football team that <laughs> generates a lot of revenue. Um, and so they were very efficient about their time. Um, but it was, it was pretty interesting the, um, to compare notes with the borough manager there who had been uh, working and I had, had previous conversations with him uh, prior uh, during the charter conversations as well. So he was aware of our charter change and the situation there. Interestingly, they have a um, seven member uh, council and they meet twice a month. They have no subcommittees, but they meet a third time a month as a body of the whole to do as a working session. 
So they've decided not to, not to have subcommittees of any sort or any kind of subcommittee structure, but they talk about everything among everybody, and it's a very efficient way of doing the work. Um, but, uh, you know, basically shared a lot of the information, you know, the police were there um, and uh, economic development issues and uh, a lot of things, uh, uh, community engagement, things that, 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 that UMass has, has been gotten really good at. And so that was a very good session. Um, I wanted to mention that I did have a, a coffee on Friday at the Amherst um, Coffee with uh, Jeff Kravitz and we had a really good turnout of about a dozen people. One thing that's starting to happen, which is kind of new, is that uh, we had three candidates for the council who've taken out papers but not returned who've showed up. And I think we'll start to see more and more activity like that as people start to educate themselves and want to know what the issues are. And uh, many people come, often people show up because they just want to hear what other people are saying. And they're just, they think it's an opportunity to have informal conversations about things. and. Um, I always can prompt them about what their concerns are and, and to generate some, even if they come without an agenda to talk about, they usually have something on their mind. There's something that um, they wanted to come to talk about. Um, we're working, we have a meeting tomorrow with the town of Hadley to talk about the transition on the ambulance services, which is a, um, a lot of steps that have to be taken and a lot of people have to be notified because emergency services, the state police, everybody needs to know that as of July 1 and at 12.01 a.m. Uh, that those, all those calls get shifted over to the town of Hadley. So we have a major meeting tomorrow with representatives from Action Ambulance Company and the town of Hadley plus our dispatch people and our fire people are all going to go through, make sure everybody's doing everything and um, we are anticipating um, that it won't happen automatically, that there'll be something, and so we're gonna be prepared on our end in case that doesn't seem, you know, flow seamlessly. Uh, but it's really our intention to make sure that it, it does happen successfully. Um, the, um, we've received another sheet of um, signatures from uh, Ms. Gage for a special town meeting. These have not been certified yet, it's the same campaign finance reform, the town clerk is, will be certifying. I don't think there are enough signatures there to um, bring it to your level, but I want to give you a heads up that that activity is still happening. Um, there, uh, the school committee will soon be taking an action on the South Amherst School, which they are relocating people, their, their school uh, activities from the South Amherst School, which is on the South Common, uh, to uh, the high school and they will relinquish uh, uh, the use of that school. That will then come into our public disposition, uh, property disposition um, uh, procedure. As we're, sort of, we're talking about what happens in the meantime. We'll probably just sort of mothball the school. So there's no activity. We don't need any, we don't need the building. We'd like to drain the pipes and you know, sort of secure it that way uh, versus maintain the heat on it because that's an expense for that building that we had not anticipated taking on and the schools is, has no interest in maintaining that building in any way, shape or form. So we will be looking at that. Um, the, um, there's a, a, just a, um, you may note these, but I'll, I'll just say them just in case people don't. There is the um, groundbreaking for the North Square at the Mill District on Thursday at 2 p.m., Governor, um, Weld is expected to be here. Weld. Weld. Oh, God. Yeah. Baker, going back in time. Yeah, it, it started yeah. back in Weld, maybe. Yeah. That would be something if he came. <laughs> <laughs> Baker. I mix those two guys up. Um, so the Governor Baker will be here, and um, Mr. Slaughter will be speaking on behalf of the town. It should be a relatively short program. If people are interested, it's an uh, open, um, groundbreaking, but people are asked to park at the um, mill um, recreation complex. Uh, a note that on June 20th, we will have a town employee picnic. That's the day that we close town hall early in the, af in the afternoon. So employees, uh, all employees in the town can gather in for, for an afternoon of uh, picnicking um, that they, that employees chip in money and everybody pays for it themselves. Uh, we give them the opportunity for that afternoon to uh, be with each other. And it's a really important um, uh, morale building opportunity for everybody. Um, 
there is a the affordable housing units that the um, uh, land trust has been working on along with others is scheduled for on North Pleasant Street is scheduled for June 24th which is a Sunday at 3 p.m. if you I think you may have gotten the invitation but you will if you don't another um, uh, sort of initiative is the Valley Bike uh, initiative which is uh, going to have a ground or a ribbon cutting on June 28th in Northampton and we're talking about having something on in Amherst to sort of um, christen our bike station we're ready for it when they when they bring the equipment in um, so that's uh, we haven't firmed that up yet but we're looking for uh, the chair has very ambitious plans to wanting to ride bikes all over the valley but um, <laughs> my, uh, my suggestion has been frowned upon but it was we have a bike path between here and Northampton I thought we could do ours and then ride over to Northampton but that might be Optimism. Okay. They I'll, are electric assist bikes, by the way. I'll meet you there. <laughs> um, no, you can't use them on the electric assist. Oh, that's all right. You just t turn off the electric assist. No, I think there's, I think I remember being told that they're not. Oh, they don't, they're not compatible with the uh, motorized the real trail, real trail I'd, rules. I'd have to refresh my memory. Yes. Um, and then there is the Sunderland Parade um, yes. coming up on the 16th. Which is this coming? Yes. This coming Sunday. 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 So what's our plan, gang? So Saturday, I think. It's Saturdays. I think it's the Wait. 16th, right? Isn't it on Saturday? The 16th is a Saturday. It's Saturday. Saturday at 11, I have it in my calendar. It's more like we said we do it. What are we doing? So the, you said the twentieth is a Saturday. Is that correct? Sixteenth. The sixteenth. I'm sorry. Sunderland parade at eleven, which is when the parade starts, not when we have to get our act together. <laughs> I'm available, but Did I think. According to my calendar, I am anyway. Did we really have any conversation beyond let's hold a place in line and then figure it out later? And I guess this now qualifies as figuring it out you later because I don't yeah. believe we ever oh. talked about it at length other no. than to no. say we don't have a float that we pull out for these things. We have a banner that says Town of Amherst. Okay, good, if we can find it. Um, at least it makes more sense than if we try and carry it in our own parade. Um, but beyond that, I mean... We literally have spent say we, no we didn't have a conversation, but we yeah. evidently did respond <laughs> according to email. It you just did, though we responded to the you, affirmative, but you, you did hold have a, a place conversation. in line. Yes, exactly. Hold That's exactly what's the center of that. So I guess the question is: Is are more than one of us available? Do we walk in the parade, or do we find some motorized transport that might convey us down the way? Well, I'm just gonna, if we can't find the town banner, then I would suggest we order, if, we, if there's time to order one to be made, like from Amherst Copy. Yeah, we need to have a banner. Right. But I think... We should be, well, Ms. Popple's not here, but somebody should be able to find it. That's the most immediate question, is do we long. or do we not there have the banner one. available? There... But we need something like that. Otherwise, the five of us walking down the street in our street clothes <laughs> really doesn't do it. Right. I'm actually not going to be available. You're not yeah. available. Okay. And I suspect Mr. Wall doesn't back yet either. Yeah, no. I don't think so. Um, I can. You can't? I can. Oh, you can. <laughs> I didn't say I was excited <laughs> to. I said I can. <laughs> I just felt like so we I, should. So I think the first question is just do we have, can we locate the banner quickly? There is a banner. There, there is a banner there is that, a banner that says, says Town of Amherst. Yeah. It's, That's it. I believe it's like navy blue or black and with two, white letters. Two people can. One two people right. can. Oh, want to carry it? Or the the other option would be if if the banner can be found, <laughs> or maybe is to uh, is if uh, we could ride in a vehicle potentially, if the, the banner could be yeah. draped from. I'm not saying we need a fire truck. I'm not saying that. You're, you're right. You're right. Assist. Your bike. Bikes. Yeah, they're not in yet, though. That's the thing. And the trolley's <laughs> the tied. Bikes. I think the trolley's tied up, getting painted. How That's about right. um, one of the town's electric vehicles? We could do that. We could do that. 
that's a, be a message and has a logo. It has a very good sized logo on it. Or the electric school bus. <laughs> but w like, would one of us be allowed to d to drive it? Sure. I mean, we are town employees. Right? Yes, absolutely. I have driven it actually. Okay, I mean, and sure. I I like I, if we could reserve um, the electric one of the electric cars that that does it because it's the town logo. Sure. Maybe maybe it'd be more it would be more appealing for Mr. Steinberg if we're not. More Maybe it would be more yeah. appealing to us if we didn't have to march around. It'd probably be hot that day. Or it could be rainy. <laughs> it could be rainy. Oh, it could be. It'll All be right. Beautiful. So with or without banner, electric so look vehicle. For banner and we'll look, if not, we'll car, look for, we'll, look, look for we'll the, have both options yes, available. Yes, both right options. Here. The car couldn't hold all five of us, six oh, of us with See, Mr. there's your, there's your route. Exactly. Right. You can't make it. I way. made the sacrifice. <laughs> no, I, I'm pre-making the sacrifice. She's off the island. Situation. She's out of the vehicle. Having been in the car, Mr. Bachman and I fill it pretty full. <laughs> I can tell you that. If, I, I don't plan old. on participating, just yeah. so you know. Oh, or I didn't think you were. Uh, we'll, we'll it'll be fine this. for those of us that can make it. So there's three of us that can make it. That would be. Yep. Maybe we would fit in the car. Uh, the only so just to fit, wrap this up. Um, we would meet there or we would meet here in carpool to well we meet here with and get in the vehicle so we would need to meet here at like at yes. 10 30. Yeah. yeah at least yeah and i don't know did they give us any direction like if you're going to be in the parade be here by x i can't remember there was a pretty long I believe thing there was but we'll i'll firm we'll, up the we'll, logistics on that and, okay. and reach out to you guys about okay what, what time to meet right here when we need to be where to make this happen but yeah. but if we can be a much more pleasant way to do it is I agree what was it right along walking would be fine too but well we can get out of the cramped vehicle and carry the banner that's right <laughs> take turns have the banner above the car with one person hanging out of the side, oh, side holding it. like a mattress <laughs> exactly <laughs> oh, we could so put one of those on top too because I'm sure there's one floating around Anyway, all right. take license. All right, just tell me what I, I I'm not really free. I, I think it'll be fine. I'm free by 10 o'clock, so it should be fine. I have a question when we're done talking about mattresses and banners and cars and electric assist and all kinds of things. Which is, I'm just making a note about. Logistics. Just make your note, exactly. So, backing up, I don't know, about eight items on the town manager's report. I heard something fly by, maybe about June 24th at 3 p.m., a groundbreaking on North Pleasant. What? Wait, what are we talking about? Oh. Not groundbreaking. Um, what did I write? <laughs> That's what I wrote. What did I hear? It's a dedication. I thought I sent it to y'all. I got something from Amherst Community Adams. Land Trust. Yeah. Um, I think their habitat house on North Pleasant is being... Is finished. Cutting, is finished. Right. Because so we, went, we went to it when it wasn't, when it was just the groundbreaking. I went to it then, and so um, so June twenty fourth at three p.m. Yeah, three. Okay. on site is the rib the, it's sort a of the dedication of the dedication. duplex on North Pleasant Street. I don't remember seeing that, but I'm not saying ten seventy three and ten seventy five. I'm going to forward you the invite I got from Maureen Adams. I I don't know if I got it from Mr. Buckham, I don't remember, but I got I, it looked like a group. You know, she sent it to. Yeah, because of some of us went we're... to the ground. No, no, I, I don't yeah. know what. Thank you. If you would forward it, that'd be great. Are there other questions for the manager relative to his report? Or, or he probably has 20 or 30 more things. That was only okay. 10. You have what I have now. Yeah. That's all I have. That's all you had? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Make oh, sure you nice were... try. What are the questions for the manager relative to Tell us what this is. Oh, the first oh, yes. in our packet. Yeah, sorry. Um, so uh, this is a rate increase from Berkshire Gas, and I was asked to include this in your packet, so it was uh, registered in, in your packet. So that's why it's in your packet. To so notice the filing for the rate here, rate changes. Right. The, the nearest hearing to us, if I read it correctly, is in Greenfield. Is that yeah. correct? I think, and I may have... I skimmed this a while ago, but I think one of the reasons they gave for needing to increase the rates was because of the volume of of um, customers they had, which I thought was a bit 
<laughs> disingenuous. Disingenuous, yeah, given that they've had a moratorium on customers in our area, but mm -hmm. they had that listed. And perhaps that relates to other parts of their coverage area, but I, that one struck me a bit odd. I don't know if it was in that particular letter or a different announcement of the of the same thing, but they, you know, they have to list reasons why they're asking for a rate increase, and, and they included you know, an increase in number of customers. But So without trying to be too pejorative about that ongoing um, situation with Berkshire Gas and moratorium-wise, um, so yeah, we get letters from Comcast every couple of weeks telling us how many channels they have or don't have at any given moment, too. But in terms of a hearing for this, is this something that we are looking at from an economic development standpoint that we think it is appropriate given our partnerships with the business community, the colleges, or whatever? I, I'm just wondering, are we planning to do anything, or are we asking the town manager? I'm asking the town manager if he was planning to do anything, and I guess I'm asking the board if we hoped we would do anything. I don't have a dog in the fight. I'm just concerned about the on, you know, the ongoing right. moratorium right. The, issue. The Town manager and our staff are not planning on doing anything. The hearing in Greenfield was tonight. The, the one in Pittsfield is next week. Um, this is a rate increase that happens periodically, unless happens. there was some issue that uh, th this helps provide public notice to people because we receive it as, as the sort of recipients for the town. It gets publicized in the newspaper that nobody sees the ads. Yes, um, exactly. So this is just a way to air that, that they're looking for a rate increase. Usually it's really up to the um, attorney general's office yeah. to make a decision or DPU. So it's it's actually July 11th. Oh, July 11th. I'm sorry. So we've got a month. We've got a month. Yeah. So that so it's public hearings to receive comments on the company's proposal as follows, and then it's July 11th and July 23rd. So you've got a month to get fired up about it, I guess. So, but go ahead. So my question then, I'm sorry, I'm still not communicating this fact. We are still in a moratorium situation. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't this be the opportunity to say? Oh, and we don't have to be sarcastic about it. We, we feel sarcastic about it. We don't have to be, though, to just say, this is our chance while they're asking for something to say, we remain really concerned about the moratorium because it's negatively impacting our community, it, both residential and, um, and, I mean, that's part of what the Attorney General's office or the utilities take into account when they do these things. And I, there's always a big hubbub when they do it, and then they always get what they want, is what it seems to feel like. But would we not bother mentioning this again? I mean, we've had no other opportunity to mention the moratorium officially anyplace else. I mean, I'm normally not one to say, let's just tack on our idea, but this is an ongoing problem for our community. Mr. Simon? Mr. Yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of, I, I did think about that too, and the, the problem is, is that um, they were talking about a very specific plan that um, in the last round that had to do with approval of sort of a uh, distribution plan, and that was a, a time when it was a ripe issue. It was relevant to the what they were granting this has to do is purely rate right. and so it, uh, it would be raising an issue that um, if they were going to be responding to it they would say um, it's not relevant and um, they would be right I think that the uh, only question is whether we would want to issue a statement send a letter just for the uh, it, say, hey, we're still concerned about it, but it isn't going to have any effect whatsoever on their rate decision. Right. I think to be consistent with the idea of there's limited staff resources that um, because it would be pretty symbolic and yes. not that useful to us, um, although our, citizens, our residents might like it if we went yes. and fought about rate, um, that I would, I would not make it a high priority to add to the list of um, things staff would need to do on our behalf. Sounds reasonable to me. Are there other questions for the manager relative to his report or other things? If not, then select board member reports. Anyone? Mr. Steimer, do you have one? Yeah, the only thing that I would mention is that um, last Saturday there was a um, 
program that was put on by Mothers Out Front, who had been the group that brought the uh, bylaw and zero energy buildings to town meeting and then worked with us for revised uh, by revisions to the bylaw, revised bylaw, and then we uh, uh, presented at the town meeting and the revised bylaw was adopted in place of the original. And what they did is they organized a tour of four zero energy buildings in the town of Amherst and uh, uh, the tours were generally done by people who were the, the architects or were very involved with the, the project themselves and they presented, presented a lot of information about it. It was an um, interesting tour. I did two of the four. It wasn't set up that you had to do all four. I actually had seen two of the buildings already. Um, one was actually a renovation and then solarization on top of renovation to achieve zero energy at the South Congregational Church. Um, and that was very impressive because the original church building is dates back to like 1824 or something like, you know, it was a very old building. Um, and then the, all of the other ones were brand new things. And uh, I think the most recent one being Crowdy Hall at New Mass, which is the other one I went to. Um, on Saturday. It was very interesting um, presentations. Um, it uh, made me feel that um, we have at least an opportunity here with the bylaw and the expertise in the community to achieve what the intent of the bylaw is. We don't know until we try. Um, the question ultimately is, um, I think, one that we've been aware of and I in, uh, just have to deal with when we, when we get there as a community, and that is the additional cost to build a uh, uh, zero energy ready building um, as opposed to a building. And uh, we don't know the answer to that, but I think that the thing that I found was is that the Photovoltaics um, were not that expensive, but it has been um, successful, and um, that um, all of the buildings have the same questions that we identified throughout the discussions that we had, which is how the building is utilized and managed is important. So that's uh, sharing what my one thing is. Ms. Kruger, do you? I don't think I have anything. Okay. Ms. Brewer? I have a big pile of paper here. You must have a pile, too. Um, the League of Women Voters has w was worked with um, Mr. Mooring associated with the signage, associated with their book donations for their big book sale that's going to be at the Fort River School, Fort River Schools again, providing them space for that. So we'll start seeing those around town. Um, I said, not on the common, not on the parks, <laughs> don't put signs there. And they said, yes, we talked to Mr. Mooring, and he um, told us that he will pull them out if they are, if they are doing that. Um, and we had, Mr. Slaughter is probably going to talk about the fact that he did a lovely job reading the annual select board proclamation that we did so early this year, we almost forgot about it, um, <laughs> for the June 10th celebration yesterday, celebration of Race Amity Day. As always, I'm a little frustrated that town meeting, which is very fond of resolutions, passed this four years ago, and very few town meeting members seem to be aware of it, but the League of Women Voters also helped promote this, as well as town staff jumping on getting it onto the town website and showing the proclamations of the, both town meeting and the updated one that we do with the select board each year. So that was a lovely time and included some recognition of Wildwood students who are also talking about the issue and had made a lovely poster, so that was very nice, and it was nice of you, you to host that for our community and thank you to Ray Elliott and all the people who work with him to make that happen. Um, and the Senior Center had its 50th anniversary celebration by having a dinner at the Lord Jeff on Friday night and there were presentations from Senator Rosenberg and from Representative Goldstein Rose and then they called me up there and I didn't have anything to hand them. 
So I uh, talked for a few minutes, and that was lovely, and um, a lovely celebration. Uh, there was a very lengthy slideshow that showed uh, some of the iterations of things over time and how people had uh, viewed the senior center when it first started, et cetera, and the different names that had gone through it. So that was quite lovely, and uh, uh, congratulations to them for that. A completely separate topic, although we touched on it earlier, associated with our June 25th parking hearing. So one of the things we talked about, and we and we knew Ms. Puppel was about tying up so many loose ends before her well-deserved retirement, is it was said at agenda setting that maybe Mr. Mooring would be the one who would be talking with the neighbors on Fisher and Harris. And then any legal notice would get copied to the select board, which hasn't happened yet, but I believe it probably showed up in the paper over the weekend since it has to appear twice, but maybe it hasn't. And to be reminded, so we need that, but we also need to be reminded, was the material that we talked about at our pre-town meeting session the downtown parking working group recommendations, or is there something else we're going to have the memo for the 25th? So could we please reissue that this week by email and so and then attach a copy of, you know, if it's just a photocopy of what was in the paper, or, you know, the online version or whatever makes sense. Just so as we're going about our days, we can also remind people that it's coming up and that if they have anything to say, they better do it at the hearing rather than complain afterwards. That would be super helpful. Um, while we're talking about the hearing, I want to be clear that there's three very specific things on that Thank memo. You. We're not talking about um, changing the hours, changing the rates. We're talking about um, having thir 13 okay, it's 15, um, spaces behind the Ann Whalen parking lot that um, are behind that um, metered. And we're talking about, I think, adding one fi more 15 minute free space over by what was share coffee and it's now going to be something else and maybe moving the other 15 minute or putting it next to that I can't you know I don't have the materials here and then changing the signs for the taxi stand because we don't have any taxi businesses it's not come and talk about anything you want to talk about right. I mean about parking I mean it, that might happen but please these are very specific recommendations to just those three points that's what we're considering I also Oh, everyone's got their uh, So there, there are more than three points. Okay. There. Yeah. Uh, there's also Olympia Drive. Uh, no, I, and, I'm just about the park. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, and then Fisher Street, and right. so. Right. You exactly right. But yeah. In terms of if we're saying come and talk about parking, it's Fisher Olympia Drive, and then these recommendations, not. But it's not. Some people might think it's like anything to do with. No, that was why I was hoping the legal notice would be made available to us. So, that so we could what the legal notice is. says is um, uh, to solicit public, co public comment on proposed new and or review of existing parking regulations. One, lot off of Kellogg Avenue adjacent to the Ann Wayland <laughs> apartment parking area. Two, east side of Boltwood lot off of Kellogg Avenue. Three, South Pleasant Street. Four, Fisher Street. And five, Olympia Drive. Uh, the select board will be considering changes to parking regulations, including but not limited to parking rest restrictions, tow zones, and or the addition or elimination of restricted free or metered parallel parking spaces. Yes. Yes, which I remember Ms. Puppel worked very carefully on to make it as broad as possible to give us alternate choices in case we came up with something that right. night that would still fit within the legal notice because it did also include increasing the duration of the time on Olympia Drive as opposed to the whole idea of doing Fisher Street so and, right. and the no parking notices that are there now. So you'll just forward that to us, because obviously you have it right there, and re-forward us the um, Downtown Parking Working Group's recommendations sometime before the packet that's due for the 25th would be helpful. Before the packet? Can't, yes. We just can't include it in the packet? Um, I, I don't remember where it is off the top of my head, <laughs> so I want to be able to tell people this is what we're doing. I mean, I... Yeah, because they're not going to see the legal notice, and we've got people talking about parking, so. We can't find it easily. Fine. Re forward. No, oh, it's in, it's in the board it. packet. I can just yeah. reference the board yeah. packet. Yeah, if you you could if you can find which packet it was in, yeah. that'd be great. But I can help. You know, if it's. Thank you. That's helpful. Any other items in your report? 
Um, I think for me, as far as the select board member report, um, yes, I was at, although I had to leave early, um, I was at the uh, Race Amity Days uh, celebration. It was in the Unitarian Universalist Church, Universalist um, Meeting House, I guess is what it's called, not a church. Um, and it was a nice event. I did not get to stay for the, all, all of it. Um, did you want to mention this? You should. All right. So I'll mention it. Um, the, we're going to have a third, I believe, economic, Amherst Economic Development Forum from 3 to 5 p.m. on Wednesday, June 27th, right here in this room, in the town room of Town Hall. Um, and so it is a, the idea is for people to come together and hear about um, the Amherst economy and, of course, share ideas about the future of our economy and where we want to go and that sort of thing. So uh, as many people as possible that can make it to that would be uh, greatly appreciated. You said 3 to 5? 3 to 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 27th of June. And um, I don't believe I have anything else relative to my own report. But. I wondered if we should also preview, because we, we have gotten out of the habit of doing this because it gets late and we're really tired, is um, in terms of things coming up on upcoming agendas. And so in addition to that hearing, mm -hmm. the other thing that will be coming up is we will be talking about local licensing of marijuana and whether or and to talk about whether we are interested in issuing additional letters of support or non-opposition for medical marijuana at our meeting on the 25th. And so there's a meeting of the internal working group on the 18th that will then talk about materials to be provided for that. But if you have thoughts as select board members as to what those materials include, like me saying, hey, can you find that thing? Um, that would be helpful for that meeting on the 18th. And then, but the other part of it is that it's not specifically about a specific place on the 25th as to whether or not we're going to issue a letter of let opposition or support, not opposition or support. It's to talk about talking about it again. Okay. Preview. Yes. Any other items? Because if not, I think we've exhausted our agenda for the evening. I move to adjourn. Thank you, sir. Second. There's a second. All those in favor, please say aye. <coughs> aye. Aye. And so we're adjourned at 926.